The minute the first chord just f***ing drops, the place goes crazy. F***ing flying all over the place. Maybe a bouncer might have got his nose broken a little bit. You know, the PA f***ing goes up. The whole thing's f***ing bedlam. Instantly. Instantly. People were getting carried out. There was people bloody. People were flying all over the place. Todd, at the time, was so f***ed up that on his bass drum, he's got a holster, like a gun holster, on the side of his bass drum to put his speed pipe in. So when he's playing the show, he can pull his speed pipe out and twirl it and take a f***ing hit. Roach is conning gear f***ed up. We got Roach coming in, and he doesn't have a bass. Okay, so we find a bass. Roach needs to take the bass to go practice. So Roach takes the bass, comes back the next day with no bass. Or he's got a Ziploc bag with pickups in it and a neck and a body. He's like, can you make this work? When we would get to the town, we would scatter like wild animals and go and get in bits and pieces of trouble everywhere to the point of where the tour manager would stop taking us to the towns. He would park outside the town at a rest stop and only take us in the next day when he had to. No drug, I wouldn't partake in, no theft I wouldn't participate in, no chaos I wouldn't be involved in. I was ready. Get your game face on. Jack Grisham's in the house. It's happening. It's happening today on the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. What's up? What's up? What's up? I'm wearing a collared shirt. Let me know if you hear any uh, any rubbing. Rub, rub. Al Burrell, yo. Jack Grisham's in the house, Al Burrell. Okay? What's happening, John, in the UK? Good to see you. Robert Hogg in Scotland. Larry Kelly, you know what time it is? Yes. Greetings from LA. Yeah. It's gonna be that kind of a party today. What can I tell you? I'm and I'm up for it. Let me tell you. I've been running at it hard. Mark Tulch, what's happening up there? In the sub-zero tundra of Canada, eh? Yeah. Hey John London, what's up, man? Scotty? I'm looking forward to this one, too. I really am. You know? I really, really am. Um, good to see everybody. What can I tell you? Um, hey, Tony P., I hope you're feeling okay. We missed you. We really missed you on Sunday, man. You know? It's just not the same without you. Speaking of not the same, what's up, bro? What's going on? Bro, you look like a like a serial killer lit with that that bare bulb, bro. Serial poet. You look like a serial poet. <laughs> What's going on? Ah, too much. I'm in the box. Uh, getting ready to go see Bob Dylan tonight. Bob Dylan. Yeah, over at the King's Theater. Yo, last time I saw Bob Dylan, he was friggin' great. He did. He, he did all like Frank Sinatra songs. It was great. Oh, I remember that. I remember that great. tour. I didn't see it, but I remember when he did that. Yeah, it was friggin' great. He did all, all like, you know, the <laughs> autumn leaves. It was great. It was great. It's always a roll of the dice with him. You don't know what you're going to get with that guy. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. He, he's still, he's still yeah. at it, you know? Let's hey, do a he's, couple he's of... He's got to be... Uh, he's, yeah. Speaking of speaking of Bob Dylan, let's do some photos. But Bob Dylan's got to be eighty something, right? Yeah, I think he's like eighty two, maybe eighty three at this point. Hold on, let me look at him up. Let me look I him think up. So yeah, Bob Dylan is eighty two. Eighty two. There you go. They're all getting up there. All the all the big yeah. band, you know. Yep. All right. Ugh. That said, let's talk a little bit about this. 
some younger fellas. Some of the younger guys like this. Boom. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We know who that is. Anybody know who this is? If not, you you gotta know who you gotta know who this is, because they're pretty much one of the most smoking bands in New York City. Yep. Oh yeah. Yep. One of the most smoking bands in New York City. P Funk. Kinda. Yeah. Pretty funky. You know? Yep. That's right. It's Rebelmatic. Oh That's yeah, it. it's Rebelmatic. It is Rebelmatic. Yep. And Rebelmatic. Uh, all I wanna do is get it all. <laughs> Yeah, they're great. Yeah, they're one of my favorite bands in New York. And, you know, uh, tell us about what's going on here. Well, this is one of the five bands that we just saw this past Sunday at the uh, Back to New York Hardcore Roots uh, music series slash incendiary device record release show. And uh, also book signing. It was, uh, it was a busy Sunday and it was a blockbuster. It was a yep. killer. It was a killer night. Pembroke right there, which is uh they were first great. Time, first time I saw them, I thought they were excellent. That bass player was doing some really cool stuff too. I yeah. um now uh I believe this was the guitar player from Super Touch, correct? Yeah, that's John Bivano from Super Touch, yeah. So yeah, and, this uh, was really I really liked them. I thought they were really interesting. They were really doing some cool stuff. They were great. And you know, uh yeah. Go on. Well, we had we had Pembroke. We, we had, had these guys. We had these guys. The this was one of those days where the place was crowded mm -hmm. from the first band. Oh yeah, you know until you know the last band, which which was us. And another uh, another killer band, the Craze. The Craze were great. And, ripped uh, it up, uh, cortisol. Uh, some 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 uh, younger younger guys from. In fact, Cortisol, uh, the guitar player, was the son of Hank Hell from uh, Inhuman. Here he and is. he was right up front proudly. Yeah, right there. Proudly. And uh, these guys had a little, little sepultura in their veins, I thought, you know? Yeah, yeah. Definitely, uh, definitely front of my, who am I missing? Let's see, Pembroke, Cortisol, Craze, Incendiary Device. Wait, this one, yeah. Was the... Uh... Well, <laughs> listen... This one kind of says it all. I mean, it was uh it was packed. Yeah, you know? look at you that. Know? It was packed. And that's it, that's uh Eugene, Eugene from Gogo -Go Bardello uh, came up at the end and and did uh if the kids are united, but it was a, it was a great show, you know. Uh it was the, the, su the, such a great show. The club called me and told me it was the best show that we've ever done in all the years that we've 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 been doing it. Well, you know what? It every band brought it, and it really was. It was just a great and like the 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 crowd was filled with bands. All of our bands came out to support, and um, I gotta say, it it was really it was just what a really you, know you couldn't even though? move. You, you know, you know what's tough though. I I gotta say this. You know what's tough for me producing the show, which means having to get up at the crack of dawn. Dealing with mm -hmm. Larry Kelly, you know, and, and, and all the pre-production that goes into the show. We show up, we show up at the club at like 11 in the morning. I got to leave, the, you know, um, yep. and we got to, you know, equipment up and down, up and down the stairs, this and that stress, bullshit, you know, all this nonsense. And then for me, at the end of the day, I got to get up and headline the fucking thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but it was great, man. It was it was everything everything we hoped uh, it would be you know of course and there the it is out now um here's here is oh you know it was great to speaking to larry speaking to larry kelly oops what the hell did i just do speaking to larry kelly here's a shot of larry kelly and uh and my son caleb right that's a great shot yeah there he is yeah. yep yeah. yeah, I love it. Look, you got all the merch there. You got your hats and your your patches and books and I was glad I was glad my kid got to see it because it, it it was great, you know. And he's seen he's seen a lot through the years, you know. 
So. And he made he made the current video, didn't he? Yeah, he he did the incendiary which is awesome. Device, the, yeah. the third generation of uh, filmmaker in the work now, huh? Well, listen, bro, he better with the kind of friggin' money we spent on fucking SCAD, <laughs> Savannah College of Art and Design. Fucking guy should be running, a, you know, for the kind of fucking money and the loan that was taken out. Fucking kids should be uh, Scorsese. <laughs> seriously, man. No, nah, it, it, it was yeah. it was great. It was great seeing him. I was, you know, and and like you said earlier, it was it was kind of sad that we didn't have Tony P there, but everybody was thinking yeah. of him. So, here's you know, shot here is this one kind of says it all. This is uh, oh, oh by the way, hey, you know what the caption for this is? The caption is uh. You know, the uni on behalf of the Unabomber, <laughs> you know, on behalf of the Unabomber, you know, I got the fucking Unabomber playing drums yep. in my band, you know. What we saying the other day, cl click link below for manifesto. Well, well, yeah, you're right. You, you know why he's wearing you know why he's wearing the, the, the hood over his hat? Because I told him the, the rule in this the rule in this band is either you wear a band shirt or a band fucking hat. You don't wear both. <laughs> uh, Wait, he had a biohazard hat on and a biohazard shirt? No, he had a King's Never Die hat on. Ah, okay. It's like, come on, bro. Stop it. Hey, he's supporting um, the teams, you know? Just, just a couple more. Yo, and, and speaking of him, you know what was cool? That both are both drummers, because both these guys play on our record, we got two drummers that are that are like pals. So it's and look at cool. there's actually three drummers in that picture. Oh, three right drummers, there, really. yeah. But two yeah. of them, two of them play. You know, two of them play on our record. You know. You know what? It was great to see Matt Gray. It really was. And uh, you know, he's a, he's another really good do good dude. And you got two. You replaced a tough drummer with a fucking powerful drummer. So that was not an easy task. Matt Gray's drumming on the record's exceptional. You know, so and uh, there's a couple of the personalities that came out, guys. Oh yeah, Cropsy and and Inzaguri and Neck Scars, and it was great. It, was it really was. I mean, I mean, we they're always fun, but this one, this one was was exceptional. Biggest show they've we've done there so far. You know, all everybody came out of the woodwork, man. Everybody that little girl was losing her shit the whole she time. Was go Yo, she was going off when we were She playing. was pounding the stage with her fist the whole time. That was, that was a fun Hey, there's, hey Don, you know. there you are. Yeah. Ha. So, listen, it, it was... You know, you know it was wild? The record just came out, like, what, three days before the show? And yeah. a, whole bunch of, a whole bunch of these kids knew the, were singing along with the lyrics. So that was... That was inspiring somewhat you know oh for sure yeah and here's the last one of course you know the book the book is out too you know mike scandato hmm. and uh and, you know so that's what's up it, it, it was great and of course um we're gonna mention this later but next month is the holiday slamboree on sunday december 17th so everybody got to come out for that. It's going to be great. That's another killer show right there. So yeah. So there you go. So all right. All right then. What's in those boxes behind you? Mops. Mops. Someone's got to clean these trains. I, I just need to make box, sure that I need a box of mops, bro. Box of mops. You know. You know what? I make sure everyone has what they need here. That's what I do. Do you need a mop? You know what? <laughs> I got it. If you need it, I got it. Right. I got the Crack. mask. Remember? Bodies. <laughs> Is that what's in there? Oh, oh, who's this? Is this your guitar player? Serial Poets Official? Bodies. <laughs> she was a girl from Birmingham. All right. I'll talk to you in a bit. There you have it. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Generation Records, 126 Hardcore Clothing, Upstate Records, and the Texas Silver Rush. The Texas, the Texas Silver Rush. The Texas Silver Rush is a jewelry design from a boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene in Fredericksburg, Texas. They specialize in working with musicians in all music genres to design and create unique one-off pieces, as well as to style them for stage, album covers, promo photos, and social media exposure. The client list includes Rock Roll Hall of Famers, Greg Roley, Ringo Starr, and of course, Agnostic Front. 
Information and online sales are being taken at their Facebook and Instagram pages. And of course, www.thetexassilverrush.com. That said, let's clear the deck. Let's bring our guest on. Let's make sure everybody's okay in the chat room. Nobody's killing each other. Okay, I think we're good. Clear the deck here. Here we go. Don't be scared. Your time of reckoning has arrived. Today's guest is an American singer, songwriter, author, and film director hailing from the Golden State of California. As a musician, he is known for his work with the bands Vicious Cycle, The Joy Killer, The Manic Low, Tender Fury, Cathedral of Tears, and of course, TSOL. As an author, he penned the seminal works An American Demon, A Memoir, and A Principle of Recovery, An Unconventional Journey Through the Twelve Steps. Here today, to talk about his new documentary film, Ignore Heroes, The True Sounds of Liberty. Please welcome back a great American treasure, my friend and yours, Jack Grissom. You're muted. You're muted. Shit, man. Sorry, Drew. I'm muted. That was a very nice, that was that was a very nice intro. Yeah. And I I love what you guys were doing, man. That community. I'm a big fan of community and yeah. seeing that is just. Badass, and I just checked out Rebel Matic while I was in the waiting yeah. room. They're yeah, great. They're great. They're great. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. I, I, I love playing with them. And and uh, the, the sh I think the show was a huge success, part of the reason because it was a bit eclectic, right? Where, you know, And you know this. You get on these bills, and it's just like a bunch of the same kind of band. It's it, you know, It's the same kind of crowd. It's the same thing. But we put together these bills with, you know, you know, a drinking punk band, a straight edge bit, you know, and then you get this whole great mix. And and right. that's that's what that it's community and culture, right? Love it. Yeah, I love yeah. it. That was yeah. one of the things that hurt me, like after whatever, like after punk started like exploding, yeah. it used to be one big community, and then right. it all of a sudden started becoming these little separate communities attacking other people that were basically part of the same family. It was, it was, that was fucking crazy to me. Whatever. It was crazy. Well, well, it, it, well it, it, I think inevitably we eat our own, right? I mean, yeah. inevitably, and inevitably, you know, this thing just turns on itself and, and, and destroys itself. And then from chaos, you know, there's, you know, there's a new beginning, so you know. Yes, we'll my God is chaos, Drew. So I, like that. I wanted to tell, I was going to say a little Bob Dylan story. I heard this thing, it was pretty funny. So I was at Old Cella, right? The old Coachella for the old Peels, Rolling Stones, Paul McCartney. Right, right. Bob, everybody, right. So so Paul Tillet that, that does Coachella, he, uh, he came up to me and he was laughing. He goes, hey, man, this is what happened. So I guess Bob Dylan wouldn't let anyone else in the dressing room. Like he would let Sir Paul come back and say hi, but he wouldn't let Mick Jagger. None of the stones were allowed back in the dressing room. He kept everyone out, right? So then Mick Jagger got all pissed off or just, you know, kind of like tiffed about it. So right. when he, so Bob Dylan played before the Rolling Stones. So when the Rolling Stones came on stage, he said, yeah, we want to thank little Bobby Dylan for opening up for us tonight. <laughs> and I heard him say it and I thought, fuck, why did he say it? And then I found out it was like a little jab. So even at that level, they're shit talking and, you know, whatever else. He's, he's insulted. He's insulted that he wasn't, you know, he, he, he couldn't, you know. Go, and go. he did turn his back to the crowd and not look at anybody during the whole set. Wouldn't look in the cameras, wouldn't, you know, just doing whatever he does. Yeah, that makes makes sense. Uh, what's going on back home? How's the surf? Well, the surf's excellent. It's perfect. <laughs> it's is it? all day. This is the best time of year to come to Huntington. It's like, right. now, I mean, if you surf, there's really no reason to come here. Like, there's no freeway here. There's no reason to come here unless you have a dog or you surf. And right. And the surf today, whatever, it's it's perfect. It's right outside my window. I've been sitting on the balcony just watching all day. I was, so. you know, I was thinking about this before the show and I just, just kind of wondering, like, I, I you know, you, 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 you grew up down there. Is there still like like uh, the surf scene, the Huntington surf scene? Is it still like strong locals only? I mean, it, 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 I mean, that was I mean, that was a a, a a a strong sort of undercurrent, uh, you know, in in the in the eighties, right? 
Yeah, not as there's not as much. It's not as much as it was. There used right. to be like a real pecking order. I think when people started right. suing people for assaulting them, <laughs> started, <laughs> started but but you know when I was a kid, there was like a real pecking order, and then right. you'd have your spot. Like everyone knew, okay, this is basically this guy goes when he wants to go, right. like on a wave. It's like everybody kind of just pulls back, and you do what you right. want to do. And but right. it, I mean, look, it's 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 normally shitty. The waves aren't that great, you know, so it's just you, you end up going out and getting in hassles over a two foot mush burger. Crap. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that like the last I just thought I, I had paddled out. and It was just such a fucking it was just such a bummer just with attitudes. And, and yeah. the sad thing is a lot of these people, they just moved in. Don't yeah. look, look at I've been living downtown for 30 plus years. I still don't consider myself a local. Right. I mean, I still don't because I now my kids, they were born here. They went to school here. They're OK. Right, they're right. locals. But for me, I'm an outsider. I, I'm yeah. still an outsider, even though, you know, honorary mayor of Huntington. But I'm still I'm still an outsider. My my brother, my brother, uh, you know, was in Venice for years and and he, he's he's down by you now. But I remember my brother's always been been a big surfer and he ended up, you know, uh, uh, working, you know, and of course he's he's a cinematographer, and he ended up working surf competitions and, and shooting and, and and all that, which which he loved. But I remember, you remember what was it called? Was it called the the surf line, the surf hotline that you would call? Right. And, right. And, and right. I I remember, I remember once he's like, "Yo, you gotta hear this." It was like the, it was on the, the most epic day ever, and the surf line was like, "Mortgage the house, leave the wife and kids." <laughs> <laughs> it was it was this is it once in a lifetime mortgage the house leave the life and wife and kids get out there it was great yeah it's pretty funny i mean i'd be on tour sometimes and then i'd be bummed because i'm you know i'm i'm away from the beach it's gorgeous so i would come home and just call the surf line. i'd call the surf line just because i wanted to hear what was going on right and then the one of the head lifeguards guy he knew i called so in the thing, he'd say, it's still flat, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> like it was still shitty. You know, just, they just throw it out. You know, it was really, it was really right. funny. But, and I mean, it's a cool, once again, that's another community. It, it's, it's another bit of community. Like, t like these days, like if I paddle out, I'll go paddle out at the pier. And I really just kind of, I drift towards my house and I just spend the time talking to people, saying hi, checking yeah, on yeah. people, just, you know, Uncle Jack just drifting through the lineup. And then I come in, you know, it's really just, like I said, community. And, and we just lost one of our guys uh, a while back, Mike Moore, a uh, great mm -hmm. photographer, uh, just passed away. So I just wanted to say a little, you know, just throw his name out. Really nice guy. We had some great, great talks on the pier. Good guy. I, I mean, it's it's great that you, you're still out. There. I mean, I can relate. I mean, sometimes still being in New York here, it feels a little a little ghosty a li for me sometimes, you know, having, you know, been a kid and grew up here in these streets sometimes, you know, it's, so, you know, but, but sometimes not like even like, you know, going, you know, we did the show uh, on Sunday, you know, a block away from CBGB, you know, and, but I don't really feel those ghosts because what's happening now is vibrant and important. So, you know, right. we're, 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 yeah. But I, I like that you say that. So so I was I was born in San Francisco. My family moved to Long Beach. I was basically raised in Long Beach. And right. I I still have that. Like once once I got clean, I split Long Beach. I got the hell out of there, man. I was gone. And uh, but and there's still a ghost on every corner, man. Yeah. I'll drive there and I'll think, oh, this guy's dead, this guy, this guy. I literally had to call. I called uh the other day I called uh Christina and Maggie that were in uh well, Maggie was from Twisted Roots, and uh, sure. I, I, and they were both in suburbia. I called them just to say hi and talk to them because mm -hmm. that morning, six or seven people that I had mentioned in conversations were dead, and mm -hmm. I'm thinking, God damn, I just want to call somebody that's still alive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, because I, I was so bummed. Everybody I was thinking about, they're gone. They're, you know, it was just anyway. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I I relate. There's a lot. There's there's a lot of ghosts. You know, I I broke I broke up with that girl on that payphone. You know, <laughs> oh, I, 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 here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, you know, and and then and then you know, and then the Lower East Side is all like you know, they, you, yeah. you know, there was a dope spot there. That's where we got into a brawl. You know, that's that you know that we used to huff glue on those stairs. It's like oh yeah yeah you know, but yeah, but, but you I, know that's. 
Yeah. Well, that's how you can tell how old people are. If you ask, uh, you ask them what they used to huff, right? If they say gasoline, well, that's normally from the 50s. Then yeah, you get yeah. in the glue, that's 60s, 70s. Carbona, carbona. That's right. That's right. Then you're getting into your, your PAM, your liquid papers, your Ooh. spray paints, you know, and you can always tell like where, how old somebody is by what they were, they were huffing. So Mercy, mercy. So yeah. let's, uh, let's chop it up a little bit. Let, let's, let's bounce the ball a little bit back and forth. Um, you know, let, let's let, let's start with this. Um, I want to say I loved the film. I, I really Thank loved you. it. It was just it was a breath of fresh air. It was different. Um, you took some chances uh, as a filmmaker, and, and and I and I respect it. I appreciate that. Uh, it was different. Um, you know, it was it was nice and long. You know, I, I didn't feel I, I I didn't feel that it was you know we you know we got to make this thing palatable. You know, I feel it was you. You really, I, I felt to you know, you really, you know, got your message across the way you wanted to get it. But let 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 me let me start with you know, how did the film come together, and 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 why now? Well, it was just you know, it was just some. I had made I okay. First of all, thank you, thank you uh, for all that. Uh, I had made a you know, I was I had made a film. Somebody okay. All right, let me get this <laughs> damn story straight. All right. Somebody had shot a film about me, like a small little little film, like a little mini doc, right? Sure. And and I had gone and saw it, and I thought, you know, I, I'm going to make a film. I'm watching these guys all make films. I'm going to make a film. So right. so I made a film about uh, child abuse. Uh, it was basically, I mean, you know, might as well go for an easy subject if you're just <laughs> rolling on on the first one. And uh, right, so right. I made a film called Two Eighty Eight. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a film, it's a documentary about uh, longtime recovering victim survivors of child abuse, and and that's how it started. And then I thought, you know what? All right, now I'm going to make a T.S. Well movie. I decided I'm just going to jump in and make it. And you know, it was during the pandemic or whatever was going on, and uh, and I just thought, fuck, I'm going to do it. I I didn't really think of, there wasn't a lot of thing. I don't do a lot of thinking. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like some people think I do, but the police were always asking me, what were you thinking? Or the judge, a judge would always say that. What were you thinking? I'm just like, fucking wasn't. I think, just yeah, thinking, I just exist. I just exist on, on you know, on the ba on, on the pure, uh, pure power of inertia. There, there, there's no thinking here. You know? <laughs> there's no thought going on here. Thought. Yeah, just oh, let's make a movie, kids. Come on. You know, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and sure. and of course, you know, going back to community, I I got a great community around me, so they were all helping out and yeah. you know doing whatever and to, and just launched into it. And I think, hey, Adrian, Adrian, uh, I I think that a lot is just I don't, I don't know. I, you should probably ask me another thing. Okay. <laughs> like, well, 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 why? Um, I guess you, you kind of answered that. I guess it's just. It came together now. It was time. Um, well, you know. what do we, you know, what do they say? I mean, you know, you can go to the science of the lambs. What, what do we cover that, that, that which we see every day? It's like, okay, so if I'm going to make a film, what do I know about? You right. know, I know about, I know about child abuse. Okay. So let's start there. And right. then what's the next subject? Okay. Well, TSOL, let's take a look at that. And, yeah. and it was a different, it, it, you know, that, that's a band that's been together for 43 years. Right. You know, I'm glad I kept it down to two hours, man. Sure. Sure. You know, it's it's and it and it was really just focusing on one section, uh, you know, of it. The original members of the band, what happened to us, how we split apart, and how we ended up getting back together. That's what the movie is really about. Not so yeah. much, not so much about, I guess, TSOL as it is those four and then five original guys in that band. You know, I, I think that having some experience as a filmmaker <clears throat> i think films films like this uh, uh speak uh, it, it's not just about the band tsol the bigger there's always a bigger picture and i think films that are somewhat successful um for instance the michael alago film that i directed right it's not just about the guy that signed metallica and 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 and, and that kind of stuff what it's really about in the big, bigger picture is it's about someone that regardless of his challenges, gay, Hispanic, grew up in a, in a, in a, in a Hasidic neighborhood, he just loved music. 
and right. people and people and people could relate to that. And, and I feel that ignore heroes. The bigger picture is it's really about it, it, it's about friendships. It, it, it's about it's about you know you know Todd and you and Roach and 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 it's the bigger picture is about friendships and and th through the passage of time I, and that, that's something that I feel people can really relate to that you know right and also like egos out of control it's like we were kids man yeah. and, and then you yeah. get these people hey Gustavo uh, we were kids and then you just it's like a fucking candy store man nobody's yeah. saying no you know nobody's yeah. saying no to anything. You know, you're just running wild and, and the crazier you are and the more fucked up you are, the more it's the more it's applauded. Yeah. It's applauded. I was telling somebody one time that I had got to the point where no matter what I did, no matter what I did, it was cool. It, it's like if 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 somebody saw me, you know, dressed as little little Bo Peep in a park blowing 15 sailors. <laughs> They'd say that fucker's crazy. He's out of his fucking mind. I told you he was crazy. You know, and they they applaud that, and they go, right. "Oh, he's fucking crazy." And then if they see me helping an old lady cross the street, they go, "He's always been a good guy." So there's no. It got to the point where there was anything went like anything was good. You know, well, you, well, you you address you address that in the film as well. Whereas it, it you know kind of early on it just it got to the point where you know it it, it was. People were people weren't condoning a, a sort of kamikaze behavior. They, they, it, it became, uh, you know, much lauded, and and it's sort of a dangerous. I mean, oh. certainly, certainly in the perspective we have now, right? I mean, you and I, you know, we kind of we kind of got to the other side. I'm clean and sober, 15 years. I know you're clean and sober a long time, but you know, at the time, sort of that really destructive, vicious behavior is is is, uh, you know is was lauded it's crazy right and and no one's listening it's like it's like nobody fucking told you know george lucas jar jar binks is a fucking racist fucking character yeah, and he right. fucking sucks get it the fuck out nobody's right. saying nobody's <laughs> nobody's coming at you nobody's saying hey you're out of line and, and you're not listening anyway yeah. you're not listening it's like yeah. it's a fucking candy store for your taking yeah. and and then just surrounded i was surrounded with animals man yeah. I, I yeah. was surrounded with people that wouldn't let someone else put a hand on me. Yeah. You know, I, I remember one night, one day there was a show and there was, you know, there was this thing going on. And then I went into the crowd and there was somebody took a swing at me and there was six guys with box cutters on them, Yeah, you know, yeah. just immediately. It, it, and no, and, and, you know, when you see this, it's so, it's so sad because I watched this in, in these bands, these big bands, I watch these people self-destruct. I watch these guys die and, you know, and they go, oh, what a sad thing. What a sad thing. Fuck you, sad thing, guy. You were in the, you were in the bus. You were keeping him on tour. You were supporting yeah. this shit. You were, you were fucking still cashing in on that cow. Sure. Don't fucking tell me sad thing. Sad story. You know, you should have walked away. Everybody should have said, hey, band over. We're not going on tour. We're not doing this anymore. You know, get help. Fuck you. Uh, uh, welcome to the welcome to the world of the Grateful Dead, right? It's like they kept that guy going years and years and years and years, and and you know the guy was the guy was dead on his feet, you know. Right. You know um, one of the best things that uh, well, I think, there's been a couple good things that have happened to me, and they've all been in the realm of no. And right. One of them was uh, I. It was with one of my ex wives, and I had gotten in some shit, and you know, gotten in trouble. There was some screwing around, whatever the hell was going on, right? And so she told me, "Look, I don't want to see you again." So I knew where her car was. I went down there. I put some flowers in her car, you know, because flowers always work. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I, and of course, she calls. She calls that day. And she mm -hmm. goes, hey, she goes, did you put those flowers in my car? I go, yeah, baby. I, you know, I feel so bad. She goes, you got in my, you broke in my car and stuck those fucking flowers in my car. <laughs> she, I didn't break in. She goes, the door was locked. You broke in my car. She goes, I'll tell you right now, stay the fuck away from me. I'm getting a restraining order on oh, you. That's breaking and entering. Get some fucking help, guy. You know, yeah. to the point where I thought that breaking in her car wasn't even it's not even wrong. 
you know, I'm just putting flowers in there. I'm not just breaking in. <laughs> the end justifies the means. There were flowers, yeah. right? Yeah, crazy. So so then you get a band like the the original members at TSL and that way it was just crazy. Now, now, excuse me. Excuse me. This, 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 sh this shot here, this is a very early shot of you guys, right? Right, right. Yeah. That was uh yeah. Yeah, this is in a graveyard by my house. And that outfit I'm wearing is this, uh, if you can look at my, my bangs, you can see my bangs here. God. I was going through this fucked, uh, uh, you know, they talk about I ignore heroes. Uh, Steve Human, who sadly died right after the movie was made. He's in he the film. Great. Really he was great. Cool in it. Yeah. To lose, to lose yeah. human. But uh, this was my Jimmy Woo character. So I used to I, I used to play this cat, Jimmy Woo. And that that's me dressed like that. And uh I just wander around just <laughs> being an idiot. And then Todd, you look at Todod there with the white t-shirt and the hair pulled down. He's just a big kid, man. Todd yeah. Todd, was, yeah. Todd was the one time he threw my dog in the pool, right? So I I kicked him in the back. like I kicked Todd for throwing my dog in the pool and and he went, you know, he took off out of the house and he started heading home and I ran after him and he was crying. like you know, he was he was such a big kid. He was crying. He goes, you didn't need to kick me. I go, you threw my fucking dog in the pool, man. He goes, you could kill my grandmother and I still wouldn't kick you. you know, he's just, you know, just such a big kid. You know, I, I think we're going to, you know, like, of course, we're going to, we're going to go where the horse leads us, but so let, let, let's go with that. So Todd, you know, you mentioned Todd and, and it, it, it brought up stuff for me too, because, you know, we all have a Todd Barnes, right. you know, in, in our life, you know, the kid that just didn't get the memo, you know, the kid that just couldn't knock it off. It wasn't funny anymore. You know what I mean? It's like, you need to just, you need to just knock it off, bro, or it's going to kill you, you know? And uh, it, it, it was very sad and very heartfelt, you know, in the film that, you know, Todd just, and, and what really shocked me was how young he was when he passed. Yeah. You know? it, it, he, he was 30, 35, 34, 35 when he died. And, and the other side of that, if you want to go the good side of that, shit, that first record we did, the first black and white TSL EP, he was 15 years old, 14 That's or 15, incredible. just a little kid pounding yeah. those drums like that, man. When, yeah. you, when you look back at it and realize how young, like, like Roach was the oldest at the time. Uh, I was 20 and 81. So Roach was 21. He was the oldest guy in the band and Todd was 15 years old. That's incredible. That's that 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 that's incredible. Let let's talk a little bit about the uh, the film a bit. Just, just just some stuff that, you know, uh, just looking at, at my notes. Um I love the carny footage and 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 the analogy about, you know, uh you know, being you know, I joined the circus, you know, right. and I, I always felt that way, man, being in a band that, you know, it's like being in a carny, it's like the circus, man. It, it is just, it, it, it is, it is, it's like a traveling circus. And, and I really, I, I really related, uh, really related to that. The whole, the, the whole carny aspect. And, and, and also the whole bit about, I love how, you know, your parents say, don't go down there. There's bad things happening there, but you're just drawn to it as a kid. Right. Yes. I, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a, well, there was one story. I actually ran off with a carny. Uh, this story, it was in the movie and then I just cut it out because I thought ah, I'd used it so much, but uh, right. I ran off with a carny. I was 11 years old and gone for two weeks with some guy that didn't speak English, just split wow. and took off. And uh, you know, the funny thing about it is I later on talked to my mom about it. Right. And I said, I go, you know, I go, remember when I ran off with a carny? And she goes, yeah. I, I go, what was I like, like 12? Or she goes, I think you were like 11. You were 11. I go, I go, yeah. And I was gone two weeks. She goes, yeah, about two weeks. I go, and you didn't call the cops? I go, why didn't you call the fucking cops? And my mom looks at me and she goes, oh, we knew you'd be back. <laughs> she goes, you're, you were just different. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, but yeah. yeah, the pie, and I think that's interesting, especially since you spoke, you know, on New York, there were areas like around CBGB, you go down the Bowery, what, and it used right. to be this, you know, yeah. and it had all that energy and that craziness or whatever. Yeah. And then they gentrify it and they clean it up and they do whatever and they still call it that, but it's not that anymore. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of what happened later on with the T.S. Walt thing when when it got to be where no one else, no one was in the band. I mean, it's the same name, but it's no yeah. all the all the insanity, the riots, the craziness had all been, you know, 
gentrified, basically. All that was gone, you know? Yeah. And it was a nice place to have a bagel and walk a poodle. You know, yeah. it's like, a, yeah. yeah. Um, the, 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 I have the, oh, I want to, I want to put the, the intro up a little bit. Um, here you go. Uh, love the, love the setup here. Um, where was this? What was, okay. what was, what was the set? Is this? Okay. So this is what's bitch. Okay. I'm a fan of chaos. Yeah. I fucking love chaos. Like it's great to go with a plan. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So Drew and Jack are going with a plan, blah, blah, blah. But what happened? Maybe our plan gets broken. Maybe something happens, you know, that's not expected. And then you sit back and just say, all right, where's this taking me? So right. the way I even ended up on this stage was my, I was in one of those rooms like Mike and Ron, Greg, like all the guys were in a room. I was in one of those rooms and we lost, uh, we lost the sound. The sound got ruined. And uh, so now my whole take eight hours of filming is gone. It's destroyed. And and I I spent ten thousand dollars getting that set built. Those rooms that they're in, that's a set. That's yes. a forced perspective yes. set. Yes. And they're in the same room all the time. I just set dressed it between. That's right. Time. Okay. That's right. So so mine got destroyed. And it's like, well, what are we going to do? So I called my friend Gabby, and I said, Gabby, can you help me? Do you have a camera? Can you film me? And she goes, Hang on a minute. <laughs> Let me make a call. I'll get back to you. And she said, hey, I got a hold of Chris Belvelt, who shot Emma, who was a cameraman on speed, who was whatever. And she goes, he wants to do it. Chris will shoot it. And she said, and I found a stage. And uh, because we were thinking, I, you know, hey, I want to be on stage somewhere. And so right. she found that. And that stage, this is what's bitch. So that stage is in Hancock Park unused mm -hmm. anymore you can't get to it it's really you can't get in there it's fallen apart but houdini milton burl orson wells that's an old vaudeville stage that all those guys had worked on wow. uh all of them and there's graffiti from milton burl in there there's stuff and there's a there's a shot in there where i'm in this little room with a crystal ball and houdini actually did seances in there it's like like real you know so that stage right there that's an old burlesque stage that's you know I, I i i couldn't figure i i was assuming since you know the other stuff was that like you said the forced perspective sets i was assuming that 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 you know it was built that it was a set but that that's that's incredible no, this is, and there's like, you can't see, but there was, there's like a hive of bees up there on the, on the there's like bugs flying and mold all over the place. And, and wow. I was so stoked because so, so Chris Blavelt and his crew of guys, they're, they're so amazing. Uh, they're all union guys, but right. union guys can work for a hundred dollars a day on an is independent that, film if they want to. That's is that right? Yeah, it's part of the union deal. If they want to, if they want to do that, but they have to be paid at least that for this. Okay. So, so when I showed up that day, there was a twenty-person crew wow. to film that. You know, two badass airy camera, just you know, crazy. All the sound guys, everything. And uh, I mean, if I would have had to have, have basically paid for that, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars for that day, or whatever, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> The audience, uh, right. which was this great yeah. collection of of uh, cops, firemen, EMS workers, nuns, priests. Uh, yeah, yeah re re really, really great. Uh, how did you put this together? Well, the okay. So some of these guys are were actually in my my. They were part of this first crew. Well, that's our drummer in the middle. That's Antonio in the middle. Uh, the, this um some of those guys were old vicious circle guys part of that little that little i don't want to say gang that club i was involved in uh, a lot of them the guys that are still alive um they were in there and uh you know got some friends had some other people and just and just decked them out and i i thought i you know i don't know if it makes any sense to anyone but me <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Okay, so so down in Huntington Beach, we used to have riots. There would be the riots, the Fourth of July riots. It was badass. It, it was just wonderful. Uh, 
on 4th of July, every, like, I mean, mom, dad, everybody would be involved. People would be dragging their couches out in the street, lighting them <laughs> on fire. It's fucking crazy, right? And uh, oh. okay, so I, I saw these cops and they were sitting there and, and I was laughing because they were talking about how stoked they were to battle the kids. Like it was almost like a football game. Like, like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, like they're like, you know, shit's going down. They're all pumped up. And on our side, we're like, yeah, shit's going down. And then, and then I just, I thought about it and I was thinking, you know, you know, I'm going to throw these people in there actually amused at my evilness, you know, or whatever wow. the hell just, uh, it's great. It's a great. bad laugh tracks. And, and you know, it's, it's so funny because some people, whatever, I, I, you know, they, they just don't get it. They, they just don't, you know, it's like, well, that's a canned laugh track. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's supposed to be. What do you think I'm trying to uh, sneak it in? <laughs> yeah, that's the idea here. That's the gag. Right. Right. Um, uh, love the animation. Uh, is it uh, Ted uh, in, in, in Torsio? Am I pronouncing yeah, it correctly? Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, love the animation. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of animation. I used it in my Alago film, and it, re it really helps move the story along. How did Ted come on your radar screen? Well, he was one. Uh, Greg Keen, our keyboard player, he yeah. knew Ted, and and so uh, that that's how we got. But the thing is, you know, with a lot of this, somebody said, "Well, how much old footage are you using?" It's like, well, hang on a minute. Because a lot of it, there was no old footage, man. We're playing right. in people's, we're playing in living rooms. We're playing in warehouses. You know, back then, the, you know, the cameras, you know, you've got a, a suitcase size camera on you. You know, it, it's getting, you know, the camera's getting busted. It's getting knocked out of your hands. Yeah, you got a lot of great still photographers. Ed Culver for what, you know, of course. Uh, but, but there wasn't like a lot of footage. So in something like this, going to animation really helps. Sure. you know, move, move the story. Yeah. 100%. And, and, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, you see it a lot in, in, in a lot of stuff, you know, it just helps move. It helps move the story along without, you know, a, a talking head, you know, you mentioned this guy and, and I have it in my notes. Hold on. The, you know, my, my note, my note here is, uh, well, other than it, you know, it was nice. It was nice to hear his perspective. Right. But in a way, in a way, he's almost like the secret weapon of TSOL. You know, he 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 he's like really the the uh, you know, uh, yeah, like the secret the the secret weapon. I, I love his perspective in the film about how when he joined the band, you know, he just a whole new world of uh, opened up for him. You know, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and you gotta it's gotta be fun, you know, because you're you're going into this thing that's just I I mean just off the fucking charts. Yeah. Like let, let, let's put all the 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 niceness of today and the woke thoughts or whatever, you know, go back to then. You're a boy, you know, you're a young boy who's just basically just yeah, go to town, Huck. <laughs> yeah. the fuck right. you want to do man we're running wild right yeah. you're running fucking wild and and here's the other thing you know the women back then are just as wild and just as fucked up as the boys were sure you know it, it's it's it was it was yeah. I, don't, I don't know it was so beautiful to me you know there there it was just so wide open and crazy and well, we've talked we've talked about that often it, it was uh it was really, uh, it, it, and we're talking in the very, in the very embryonic days, the very early days. It was a real even playing field. It you was bet. like the, the gals, you know, it, 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 the gals, you know, there was there was room on the bus, there was room on the boat for everybody. You know, if you weren't in a band, you'd start a fanzine, or you'd take some pictures, or you'd throw some gigs, or you'd be, you know, you'd drive. So there was a there was this sort of a uh, golden like year dare I, dare, dare I say a year where things everything was on a was was on a, 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 a an even keel so to speak right and and you know and also there was the, there was a real it was a real uh you know what I fucking don't want to use this but like a real melting pot kind of thing man sure. like nobody was tripping straight gay black yeah. white female right. no one gave a right. fuck 
Nobody yeah. was nobody was in there. Say, nobody gave a fuck. It wasn't even questioned. It wasn't, yeah. you know, it was just, we're just doing this. We're all doing it. it, it it's no, there was no question about it. And yes, of course, later, you know, racism comes in and sexism comes in, blah, blah, blah. But, it, but in the, the beginning of this, it was just, it was just fucking wide open. Wide open, man. It was beautiful. I, I, I also think the... The ultra violence sort of changed a lot of things too. When things, you know, I, I mean, I, talking about here in New York, you know, when, 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 you know, when things just got super ultra violent, that sort of, that sort of weeded out a, a, a lot of things. When people were coming to shows to hurt people specifically, you know, that sort of right. changed things well, a little bit, you know. You know, and I do address, like, I address that in the film because, yeah, you, do. you know, a lot of times they give us, they, you know, the Orange County kids would get shit for, you know, supposedly wrecking shows and doing yeah, this. Yeah. I, right. I I read something the other day. I'm not going to say who, who wrote it. Right. But, but one of these old LA punks had written about a club being destroyed. They're bragging about it. You know, the club got destroyed. The, this got fucked up, blah, blah, blah. And it's them. They're bragging about them fucking a up a club, and then later on they say, "Well, the Huntington Beach people ruined these clubs." I've heard uh, that. I've, I've heard that from the East Coast. It's always the hunting. It's always those those you know those surf jocks from Huntington Beach. They fucked everything up, right? Which is so ridiculous. And and I'll tell you, you know, if if you would have fucking been down here. This is why yeah. I tell these, we were, we, uh, you know, and I know we've heard this a million fucking times. You don't need to hear it again. But we were so fucking hated. I, I remember uh, one of the, well, not the first time. Okay, as a, The first time I got arrested as a punk, I guess, uh, I was playing in, in this band, Vicious Circle, which around had a reputation for a lot of violence, a lot of craziness. And, you know, I had, I had, you know, crashed into some motorcycles with my car with my van <laughs> just fucking just you know there were a lot of people that weren't happy with with your friend right. jack right? right so so i remember walking and i so i i get arrested i get arrested on a charge me and my buddy go in and my buddy's got half black half white hair i have got maroon hair and the whole fucking jail's going crazy going crazy because they never seen shit like that. So they're yeah. just going, who are these freaks, right? Now, the only reason that that it didn't go worse for us in the county jail was that the police hated us worse than anyone. Like, you know, they saw the police were treating us. And I, I think in that mindset, it was like, well, if the cops hate these guys so bad, you know, they've got to be something okay yeah, with them. Right. And, and I remember, and so this this guy comes up to me, and this guy looked gnarly. Like if you're making a a prison film, here's your dude, right? Right, right. He walks up to me, goes, uh, he goes, hey, and we're in a holding cell, holding tank, right? And he looks at me, goes, uh, he goes, hey, you're Jack, right? And I'm thinking, ah, oh, fuck, I'm just, I'm gonna get the living fuck beat out of me right now. And I'm thinking, you know, just hit him in the throat. Yeah. <laughs> hit, him, hit, him, hit, him, hit him for hit him first, hit him hard and don't stop hitting. Right? Yeah. I can hit, cover up. Right. And he goes, he goes, yeah, you're all right, man. I know. I know scooter Jim and fucking somebody else from long beach or whatever. And he said, Hey, in here, you're no punk. You're no punk in here. That's what the yeah. guy said to me. And, uh, yeah. You know, but it was you were hated on all sides. So, yeah. so you know, you got the cops hating you. These guys, everybody hating you. You know, and so, so yeah, it there was violence a lot. I love, I love the bit in the film, and, and, and you know, this was new territory for me. The whole bit about the Huntington Beach, you know, cowboys next to the cuckoo's nest. Right. Like, this was, you know, I'm like a New York guy, you know. So this is this is some real, this is some real local shit. But that was really, really pretty hilarious. That so next to the cuckoo's nest, there was a cowboy bar. Well, let me tell you something. This yeah. area where I live in, this area that I, this area is red. This is as red as it gets sure. right here. Huntington okay. Beach is an old oil town. Uh, yeah. You know, there was a story. You know, heavy KKK involvement down here. Wow. You know, this like a lot of people don't really know that. And uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, my my uncle Hoyt was like a grand dragon or something, you know, it's like they, they had done a, I, I was writing, uh, I was writing a column for the OC weekly and they were talking about how racist the founding fathers of Orange County was. And they mentioned my uncle Hoyt. They said, <laughs> Hey, here's Hoyt Corbett. And there's, you know, he, 
he was one of these guys. So, you know, this, this area is, is as red as it gets. I, I mean, there were every day during the, during the, you know, the shutdown, there were parades going around my fucking block every day. There were guys coughing in each other's faces, you know, saying there's nothing. Fuck you. There was no, there was no protest in my town. Nobody was going like the whole town was coming out to fight whoever would come here to protest. So, so they don't really realize how hard right, you know, cowboyish that this area is. Cause you think, well, Huntington beach surfers, you know, it's like, well, hang on a minute, man. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there was a whole community. Pacific City was a community in Huntington Beach, just south of the pier. And this was going to be a, a black resort. That's what it was going to be. And they burned it down the day before it opened. They wow. burned it down. So that that's what you're dealing with around here. So, yeah. so you know, real, real right, real hard right. And, and, you know, I think a lot of people didn't realize that, you know. Right. So, so, so the pump, the, 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 the real punk, I mean, and I use that word kind of loosely. I, I use you know, the punk hardcore thing kind of bubbles up right sort of in the midst of this. And of course, it's not going to be a uh, kumbaya situation, right? Uh, of course. And that's what it is. It, you know, and it, it's the whole, if the hard right's there, the hard, and I don't want to say, le I'm left and right back in those days. We're talking 70s, all right? So just yeah. slow it down. You know, you get this hard right, you're going to get this hard left. You're going right. to, you know, this anarchist fucking craziness. That's that's what came out of them. Yeah, and so there were battles every day. And, you know, Mike Roach mentions that how they used to stop the punks on the street and take photos of them, Yeah, you know, and, and you would look at you, you know, there'd be a book and they just flip it through who robbed you. Oh, here it's, you know, oh, wasn't it this guy? Yeah. It, that's was, this it. Guy. That's it. it was him, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what they did. It was yeah. funny. One time, uh, I, I, I was arrested and they were giving me all my aliases, you know, whatever. And I, I was just giving them more and more aliases, you know, <laughs> yes, I'm, they know me as street corner, Tim, one legged yeah. Sal, <laughs> just giving them Joey all these ba <laughs> Joey bag of donuts, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. giving them all these fucked aliases. And then, uh, one of my buddies yells out and calls me like a real name. They would call me like Big Jim or whatever. And they go, Big Jim, Big Jim. And they're writing that down. Sure. It's like fucking so ridiculous. I, I yeah. You know, one thing, one thing you said in the film, and I, I fucking love it. Uh, you said, you know, uh, I was there. Bullshit. I wish you were there. Right. You know, that really resonated for me, man. You know? Well, and that's the thing. You know, it's like, first of all, you know, first of all, who gives a fuck <laughs> yeah. anyway? But the second, you know, these guys claiming that they were at places that they weren't yeah. at or they were, you know, it's like, I wish, I wish you were, man. I yeah. wish that everybody that said they were there was there because I wouldn't have had to live at my mother's till I was 30 something years old. I would actually add, maybe add some money. Or yeah. something. No, Crazy. It, 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 it's like uh, Yogi Berra said through, he said through his life, he's probably met half a million people that claimed that they were at Don Larson's perfect game that he pitched in the world series. You know, I was there and, and I just love that. I was there. Bullshit. I wish you were there. Right. You know, there was fucking 15 kids in the room. You know, it's like, I was there, you know? Right. It's like, Hey, I was there when you got your ass beat. <laughs> yeah, right. like, Why didn't you help me? God damn God damn what uh, were you doing there? Were you asleep? What was going yeah. on? Um, just, just looking at the notes again, uh, Tom Wilson, yeah, unsung hero in my note. I say Tom Wilson is really, in my perception, uh, you know, coming off the film, he's really a bit of the unsung hero uh, in a lot of regards, uh, seemingly, uh, if nothing else, for the fact that he really just captured the moment of TSOL. C could you give us some perspective on that? Yeah, yeah, of course. And, you know, it was funny. And I didn't realize that, you know, when you start making a film, you know, you got the basic idea of what's going to happen, but then it takes sure. on a life of its own. I didn't realize how important Tom Wilson was going to be to this film until we got into it, you know, and I, so, so what Tom, Tom, for those of you that don't know, Tom was a producer, engineer guy. And, Here's the thing. 
you get these guys with these great egos, these fucking egos. And, and, you know, here's, you know, here's Drew's band and, and they love the band and they're stoked. Then they say, well, you know what, if you just did this, if you did this, if you added the, and then they start throwing their shit out on you, you know? And it's like, Tom didn't do that. Like with T.S. Well, he would sit back and just record us. He'd say, okay, you guys do what you do. Now, for someone that's a producer, the the lack of ego, the lack of ego to just sit back and say, hey, man, I just want to capture this. I want to get these guys. I Look, I just talked to a fucking dude, and he was talking about how great a, this band was. And then he said, yeah, if they could just get in and do this and this. And I go, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Right. Well, oh, right. now you're going to produce some guy. You're going to go in there and put your little spin on them. Fuck your yeah. spin. If they're so great, just take a picture of them being great, man. It reminds me of sort of like uh, Alan Lomax field recordings, you know? It's like just fucking document, just document the moment, you know? That's but right. Yeah, just yeah. get, just, but do you know what it takes to do that? Like yeah. I tried to do it. So after I became aware of this, I went in the studio with this young band and, and really just, I thought, okay, I dig them. I like the way this song sounds. I'm just going to sit back and let it happen, you know? And it was, for me, it was really difficult to sit back and say, God, I wish you'd just push that a little more, you know, or whatever. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, but, but that's why Tom, Tom was so great in that to just, to just capture us as yeah. what it was. I, I think it was so important. Um, you know, and I mentioned it in the film because it was like collecting folk songs. Like to me, to me being back there, who would have thought anyone would have cared? Who would have thought that you and I would be sitting here 43 years later talking about this fucking bullshit? Nobody thought about that. No, there was no stardom on the horizon. <laughs> fucking, yep. We're just kids fucking around having fun, man. Nobody, there was no grand plan. Yeah. And, 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 you know, for him to just capture that so we can look back on it. Yeah. Pat spot did the same thing too. It's like, yeah. it, it, you know, it, it it's to that you can now look back and say, here's this piece, man. This is not a colorized film. This yeah. is fucking real life, man. This is what it was at the time. You, you mentioned 40 something years ago. And I know I mentioned this in last year, but here's a flyer that I made 41, <laughs> 41 years ago. Yeah. When, when I was in the Mighty CEOs, and this is back then, you know, if you made the flyer, you put your band on top, right? Yeah, that's, just how, yeah. that, that's just how you did it. But, but you know, where the fuck is the Gallery East? I travel 7 million light years and I want to see the Mighty CEOs, the FUs, and the TSOL. I made this flyer 41 years ago, and here we are. You know? I remember that show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 I, th I think that was the first time you played Boston. You I think been. so. Yeah, I, I'm almost there. positive that is, yeah. And the, and then you know strangely enough and just just real quick I mentioned the, the first time when I joined Antidote the first time I ever sang for Antidote was at the Rock Hotel here in New York City this was uh, eighty uh, I guess this was a couple years later and uh, oh uh, did you tell me a couple years later uh, at at Rock Hotel on Jane Street um, I do believe you were still in the band I might have been I don't know I might have yeah. been I can't remember fuck I yeah. I, yeah, I don't know for sure, but uh, yeah, that, that's that's another thing that that um, doing sort of the deep TSOL dive was incredibly incredibly interesting. Um, uh, 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 and you mentioned it before, just sort of how the band sort of mutated, and and you left the band, and and other things came into play. Um, you well, know, and then one guy left, that. and another guy left, and. Uh, you know, incredibly, you know, the guy that that was was in the band was was uh, uh, ended up marrying your sister. And it, you didn't mention you didn't mention this, but you were living in the same house with him. My mother's house. <laughs> My mother's. Yeah, I didn't because no, one, I didn't. Here was the thing. So somebody said, you know, how much are you going to go into this? How much are you going to yeah. go into this? And I was yeah. very clear to to the guys in the band. I said, look, I don't want any shit talking. Right. No shit talking. Yeah. Don't name names. Good. Don't shit talk. You Good. know, we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. You can talk about hey, the band, whatever yeah. happened to the band or whatever, yeah. but we're leaving that out because it doesn't have any so you you won't find any name dropping shit talking yeah. in that 
in that thing other than, you know, well, this is what was going on, you know, with the guys or this, but there's no name dropping in there. And uh, I, because I just didn't want to get into all that. It, it yeah. wasn't necessary. I didn't find it necessary. And and I commend you for it. Uh, I, I feel the same way. It, it's, it's just, it's, it's, there's, uh, I, I, when I, and when I see that, I find it, it, it at this stage of the game for me, a little cringy. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. You know, why go there? Every, you know, we're okay. Why go there? You know, right. like we, we, we have nice lives now. Why go there? You know, it's, it's like for, for the most part, but I love the analogy when you said uh, you, you went and saw the band you know, right. the, the other lineup. And it was like going back to the old amusement park and it just wasn't, there was just nothing there. It, it was Look, heavy. It was heavy. It was, yeah, it was so different. And, you know, and, and that's their story to tell. Hey, that's man, right. you guys go fund a film. Right. You go raise right. the money and go fund a film. And yep. and I'll tell you, there, there was a little bit where um, I, I remember I there was one thing that angered me one thing that they did do is they had put out this record and in the in the record they said oh we started out as a little garage punk band it's yeah. like hang on a minute hang yeah. on a minute. because i know i know how hard it is to make a name that's right making a name you know it's like wait a minute you walked into a name that was already created you know there had been tours there had been movies There'd been records. You walked into a made situation, you right. know, and I always think to myself, well, what have you done since, you know, well, show me, show me your works. Right. Show, Cause I know how hard it is to start from zero and, yeah. and to build a name up and build a reputation up. You know, it, it's fucking difficult, man. It, it's difficult. Absolutely. And, absolutely. and to, treat, to treat what we did, establishing that name as yeah. if it was nothing you know, it's like, well, everything happened after that. It's like, yeah. no, man, no, everything happened before that. That's you know, right. later on, there were no more crazy shows, no more fucking riots, no more nothing, no more of this. You know, and I know that's got nothing to do with the music, but it does have a hell of a lot to do with the reputation. Uh, there was no more of that anymore. It was yeah. very homogenized, very, you know, yep. let's have a cocktail. Yeah, and 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 as we get older, it 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 has gotten it's it's incredible, uh, and I can attest to this. Being you know, we we just put out we just we just put out this new record, and and I'm so happy with it. I, I know how hard it is to to sort of build the infrastructure in in, in this day and age, except especially you know uh, you know with guys in our peer group in our age group you know it's right, right. It, it's really great to to you know to get it out there and and to to sort of uh, build the infrastructure so yeah you're right it's it's easy to step into something that's already uh that's already established you know right and i'm not saying they didn't put their work in or whatever the fuck yeah. they did but it was already there you know yeah. what i mean it was already this and and i think that that is the thing that's so precious and yeah. so hard to get because I, I know later on, like when I was in the Joy Killer, what, what gave me a step up was the fact that I was in TSL, but it was basically, you know, you're you're at the fucking bottom, man. You're yeah. not walking in headline and shows. You're right. not, you know, you're you're basically, you know, you're opening the gig <laughs> that night. You're, you know, you're in a ship van driving around for 50 bucks a show. So uh yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. And there's uh there's a joy killer shot. The joy, yeah, there's, the yeah. joy there, there's the joy killer press shot on from Epitaph. You yeah, know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I like that. Mark Phillips, you know, it's funny. Mark Phillips in the right, God damn it. You know, you were saying something about Texas and, uh, yeah. you know, and, and that's the, the one thing else that was mentioned in that film, uh, you know, the ignore heroes. A lot of people forget that when T.S. Well first went on tour and, you know, Black Flag and the Circle Jerks, the Dead Kennedys. We're we're shit. We're we're only sixteen years away from the Civil Rights Act, man. Right. <laughs> people yeah. people think like now you got kids these days. They're not realizing that when this stuff was going on, the the Jim Crow laws had just stopped. The Civil Rights Act. You know, you're rolling into areas that that were just fucking gnarly, man. And 
the other thing about this going on tour back then, there wasn't cable TV. Now I know that doesn't sound like a big deal, but we're talking, this is local news. Yeah. This is not, you know, the dialects would change every 50 miles. You know what I mean, this was like, you're going into some sketchy areas. We, we, it's funny. Cause I, I just, I just moderated a book event with Mike from channel three here in New York the other day. And, we were talking about sort of the network of the, the credit stolen credit, the credit card <laughs> number. <laughs> you know, like, cause I remember, you know, Chuck Dukowski gave me like, uh, well, well, Chuck Dukowski handed, you know, it filtered down to me. Right? Yeah. We had Exxon's, we had Exxon's, you know, calling card number. Oh, and right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it just was filtered down to like within, you know, within 15 minutes, about 150 like fucking punks, you know? Yeah, it was. I I had one of the I had one of the bitch and uh, I I've had all sorts. We had the Boba Fett that would uh, the Boba Fett was yeah. uh, that that thing that <laughs> put the coins in you know put the coins in the phone and, <laughs> and the other one I had I had this badass AT and T number this kid gave me and you would call this number and a computer would come on and go authorization code which was badass anyway, that a computer's talking to you, right? And Not then right. you'd give the numbers, you'd say one, two, three, four, five, seven. And the computer yeah. would go, did you say one, two, three, four, six, six? <laughs> like, no, I didn't. And then it would go call accessed. And then they, you could get your free phone call. <laughs> and there used to be a pay phone in CBGB's and we played a show there and I called my buddy on the AT&T card and just left the phone open so he could listen to the show while we were playing it, you know, so. I, I, does anybody know what, uh, what was that thing called? The, the, the thing that you put up against the phone and- uh, rrr, 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 that, Yeah, the Boba Fett. I, yeah, I, 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 I know there's a name for it. There was some sort of a name for that. But yeah, that, that device that you would just, you know, right. you, 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 you fool the phone. Right, uh, the operator that, think yeah. you're doing, yeah. But Let it, me but, take, go ahead. I'm sorry, one go, more thing go, and I'll go take go a ahead. sponsor. Go ahead, do what you're going to do. Go you're uh, okay, let, let me do, uh, let, let me do um, a, a sponsor break for a couple minutes. Let me bring the women of the pin on, talk about an upcoming event. The phone freaker, someone says. The phone, I got a phone freaker. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, freak box, I guess people call it. A freak box. My, I've, I've never, never heard that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, I'll see you in a couple of minutes, man. All right. All right, Larry have it. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Our guest today is the one, the only Jack Grisham, talking about his new film, Ignore Heroes, The True Sounds of Liberty. Uh, we're going to hear from our sponsors. We're going to come back, and we're going we're gonna to go deep. We're going to get weird. We're going to have a lot of fun. We'll see you in a few. Peace. What it do? Welcome to NYT Comics at 117 Main Street, Dobbs, Surrey, New York. I'm Debo the Pro with my homie. Lee Farley. Welcome to the spot. Specializing in yesterday's and today's comic books, rare CGCs, toys, collectibles. Got skateboards, old school tapes, Magic the Gathering, Warhammer. Video games, original art, original art pieces by your favorite New York City and worldwide artists. Let's go. Skate decks all day, baby. We also have the young reader section here for like 10, 10 and under. Uh, pops. People love the pops. Star Wars. Oh. We are New York Hardcore. We always rep the scene. Let's get it off. Oh! Will that be cash or in debt? Do you mean debit? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Another eternal satisfying customer. <laughs> hey guys, Vlad from Organic Grill. As you can see, we're in new location on West Third Street, right by Blue Note and Comedy Cell. The place is bigger, kitchen is bigger. We have more varieties, more food. We are looking forward to treat you guys with great dishes. All Hardcore Chronicles, welcome to 
to Organic Grill. We are going to serve all the events as we usually do and we are happy to see you guys. Since 1992, Generation Records has been a mainstay of the New York metropolitan area music scene. Today, they offer a diverse selection of new and used rock, jazz, indie, hip-hop, punk, hardcore, metal, blues, soundtrack, and reggae LPs, as well as t-shirts, posters, and other merchandise. They buy used record collections and music memorabilia and will pay you top dollar for them. House calls made for large collections in the tri-state area. Call or email generationrecords at gmail.com and follow them on Facebook and Instagram. And we're back. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Want to mention a couple of upcoming shows before we bring Women to the Pit. On <clears throat> this Sunday, the non-residents will be on uh, one, of, one of my favorite New York bands on the up and up. Uh, a week from Sunday, Joe Nelson will be on. Uh, of course, Trust Records being behind the SSD control. Kids will have their say reissue. He is the original Ignite frontman. Johnny Santos from Spine Shank on December 3rd. Yo, listen, what can I say? If you had a show, you'd bring your band on too, right? Uh, we got a new record out. Why not? Let me bring let me bring the Jamokes in my band on. Let, let, for those for those that are enjoying the record, loving the record, uh, let, let's 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 go deep. Uh, we'll give you some perspective on, on you know uh, who worked on it. You know how how we did it, what we did. We'll probably have Chris from Bridge Nine on and Zum on and stuff like that. Johnny Temple, Girls Against Boys, Soul Side, Fake Names, uh, coming on December thirteenth. Uh, 300th episode with Ray Capo, Youth of Today, December 20th. Mike from Channel 3, December 27th. Uh, this one has not been announced yet. Uh, there's an Extreme Music Awards show that's going on in Albany. I thought it would be great to bring the creator, Mike Valente from Brick by Brick on, along with some of the presenters, Danny Schuler from Biohazard, Mark Rizzo from El Nino and Soulfly, of course, Bob Riley. I'm a presenter at this thing, a whole bunch of other people. We're doing a show, talk about the, the origin of this and uh, everybody that's going to be there. This will be a fun one. Uh, Glenn Cummings on January 7th from Scatterbrain and Ludacrist. Uh, Mike Flintz, we just announced this the other day from Riot, uh, talking about the film uh, Immortal Soul, uh, a Riot tribute. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to announce it here. Somebody we've been after a long time to get on the show. Here we go. Dickie Barrett from the Defiant and the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones will be on the show Wednesday, January 24th. So there you go. Old Boston Hardcore represent our old running buddy, Dickie Barrett, will be on the show. That said, let's bring our friends from Women of the Pit on, Lori Dawn and Gina. What's happening? Hello. Hey, what's going, going on? on? I also awesome. on residents coming on. I love those guys. They have a really interesting story too. They do. You know, they have a yeah. cat res. They have a cat rescue thing. Yeah, um, they have that. Like, they like. They like. They're everywhere. They're like, yeah, they have a moving company. They're like really passionate about felines, and yeah. uh, they're just great guys, man. And and, and yeah. I, I love I love I love them. I I'm a big supporter. You know, I'm a big supporter of non residents and Rebelmatic and. And 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 Winter Wolf and like these 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 are the bands that these are the bands and the people that support me you know and 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 I support them you know yeah so 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 that said awesome. let's yeah let's talk about a couple things uh, let's quickly let's talk about this event um, Gina Ooh. tell us about this is coming up this weekend what's happening this is a three day art and photography exhibit at C Squad. It is here and now. Um, there are five artists that are featuring their work. We have Michelle Monona, who is sort of like the impetus for the show because we wanted to showcase her work. And then a couple of others just kind of, Lori has her ceramics. I have my art and maybe some photography, maybe some surprises. Hey, Gustavo. Uh, hey, Sean. Um, Zero, Mia, um, really, just really cool stuff. There's going to be surprises each day. Friday is sort of like our opening. We'll have some snacks and like a little bit of a hangout. Saturday, we have uh, Kate 
Kate Ready, Kate 108, is going to do an acoustic show. And Sunday, we have some live art going on. So if you can, if you're in the city and you can make it down, come hang out. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I think, I, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but if I'm going to come down any one day, I should come down to see Kate play, right? Like well, that, that's what, that's when I mean, we want bodies in the room, right? Yeah. <laughs> Our set is going to be at four o'clock. So on okay. Saturday and um, yeah, it's going to be a nice acoustic set. It'll be a fun day. Okay, cool. But so I, don't, I wouldn't miss too because if we I got double barrel. We got Anne Marie spinning tunes, and she's got some surprises up her sleeve. So I, I right like it's be yeah. a fun night too. I like Anne Marie's DJ stuff. You know. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me I too. really do. No, I, 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 she just DJed our show the other day. You know, I along saw. with her boyfriend Sid the Kid. You know, like I got to <laughs> suffer through Sid's like shitty punk rock music to fucking get to like. Anne Marie's, you know, cool old, you know, thumping skinhead shit, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that cool. said, um, and then we have this going on, Women of the Pit uh, and New York Hardcore Comics presents the Holiday Slamboree, right, Lori? Yes, we do. And we have toys playing. And I, this is a band that I've been wanting to get to the Barry Electric for a while. These are my, my Long Island girls. Well, they're not all from Long Island anymore, but I'm claiming them as Long Island girls. Toys. Mm -hmm. Chom Hoffa, also some Long Island connections there. RBNX, we love those guys. Butterbrain, Sally Woo. May, um, and No Redeeming Social Value, you know? So, I mean, that's a, a party great... lineup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, this, will be, this, this will be, yes, Gustavo, it, it is going to be an awesome show. And listen, coming off the show we just did on Sunday, I, I said it before, it was the biggest yeah. show we've ever done there. And, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and I think that this show is going to be really great as well. It's the holidays. Um, I hope everybody's in town. Everybody comes by. Uh, it, it's, it's an eclectic bill. You know, one block from CB's, all ages, uh, free hardcore matinee. I'm not playing on the bill. So that enables me, enables me to deal with everybody's bullshit. So there, so there you go. Bring it. You sign up for it every yeah. month. Yeah. That's going to be a great show to bring us into the uh, the holiday season and the end of the year. So absolutely. Well, for I'm sure. excited. I'm excited, um, and I'll see you down Friday, either Friday night or Saturday night, or or or, Saturday, or both days. So or I'm really both. looking forward yeah. to the event. Yeah, something awesome. fun every day. Thank you, Drew. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. I'll see yeah. you guys soon. Looking forward to it. Take care. Bye. Bye. Well, there you have it, Women of the Pit. Lots going on. Hey, I just want to mention real quick before we bring our guest back on and a special guest of the show. Um, for those that are looking to support the show, please, show always needs support. There is a Patreon page. Uh, uh, join the Patreon page. Uh, get, get the new book for free. Um, the New York Hardcore Chronicles, Volume 2, 1990 to 1999 is doing a brisk business. Uh, there's a PayPal address too if you want to contribute. There's also a super chat function if you have a, a, mess, a, a question for our guest when it is question time. Also, both, both books are available at www.stonefilmsnyc.com. There's only, there's only like 20 of the first volume left. I've gone through 1,250. There's like 20 left. So um, they're both available at www.stonefilmsnyc. Uh, buy it. It'll ship out the next day. Next day shipping. Um, thank you, Courtney. Yes, great book. That said, let me bring our guest back on, Senor Jack Grisham. And uh, hey, Jack, I want to bring a friend of ours on. He's been on the show. I've known this guy a real long time. No one, respect him, love him. Uh, hey. Rackman. <laughs> Paul Rackman. What's hey, happening? Man? <laughs> hi, Drew. How are you? I'm good. Um, hi, Jack. How you doing? Good, good. Hey, just hey, for you to bring us together here, coast to coast. Yeah, it's very nice. <laughs> hey, real quick, just about the girls in the pit thing. Uh, yeah. I just want to tell one funny story. I got I got two daughters. They've both been in the pit since they were kids, like little uh -huh teeny kids man wow. just you know i told them here's the right way to stage dive here's whatever <laughs> and one night was so badass because my one younger daughter was in this real so she you know they're all wearing little 
clothes that are way too old for them, right? Uh -huh. And uh, so she brings the whole crew to the show. And they're all dressed like little mini skirts and shit, whatever the fuck. I said, one of them, one of them's got a t-shirt and a pair of Levi's on, right? So I'm thinking, well, fuck, this one, what's going on here, right? So we start playing the show. And then the one little girl in Levi's in a t-shirt fucking runs right past me and just swan dives into the pit. I go, fuck yeah. Like I'm all stoked, right? <laughs> I'm all stoked. And then a second later, another one goes by. And it's a different girl, and she's got the T-shirt and the jeans on, and she swan dives in. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? So what they did is they were switching clothes. Like oh. one of them would dive off and then come back and they'd change clothes. And so they were all fucking getting in, you know. So so they That's wanted awesome. to wear their, you know, they wanted their fucking mini skirts with their whatever. But then they, anyway, whatever. Hi, no, Paul. But, yeah. <laughs> hey, Jack. Hey, um, <laughs> another this, great story. <laughs> Hey Paul, um, you were the first one that 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 put uh, Jack's film on my radar screen. Um, it was. You oh, were. Maybe I was. Yeah, you were. And uh, you know, I know you were an executive producer of the film. How how did you get involved? How did it come across your radar screen? Well, actually, if I remember correctly, I think Jack called me. I did. Cold, called me one day, and. Uh, you know, when I look back at it now, I can now recognize, you know, this kind of beat down thing that happens when you make a movie, you spend a year making it. And he calls me and he goes, hey, man, um, you know, everybody's telling me I need thirty five thousand dollars to finish my movie. You know, I think you said something like that. And I the first thing I said to him is like, do not spend thirty five thousand dollars <laughs> finishing your movie. Yeah. You know, don't do that. And. And it was almost like a desperate call. But anyway, I came in at that point. He was finishing the film and just helped him finish it for, you know, a lot less. A more punk rock way, I guess. Yeah, half of 35000 <laughs> Yeah, Half or a little less than half. Oh, whatever. You would know. No, I would. no, no I'm yeah, kidding. Still, it was yeah. that's really how, how I came in and just talked about trying to premiere it at a festival and yeah, I'm you know, just the first time. First time I mentioned that, Jack was like, "I fuck festivals, fuck distributors, <laughs> fuck movie companies, fuck yeah. everybody. They've all fucked me my whole well, life." Well, so well I you, really yeah, you, 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 told and me. I was like, and I was like, okay, I respect that. Let's just try one festival. If they say no, fuck it, <laughs> just put it out. Yeah, well, you told mean. me, you told me they said that, that, that you know you should cut the film down, and Jack was like, "Tell them to go fuck themselves." <laughs> oh yeah, well, that was, yeah, oh. fuck it, man. This yeah. look, at Jack, Jack made that perfectly clear the first time I talked to him too. I go, well, you know, it's a little on the long side. It's like, yeah, I don't want to cut anything, <laughs> and I'm like, this is like a Jack Grisham film. You know, <laughs> he created it, he thought of it, he directed it. Fuck it. If he doesn't want to cut anything, he doesn't want to cut anything. I'm yeah, okay but, with that. You know, Paul, I'll tell you, I was, I, Paul, I was going to call you the other day because I, I just went to go get funding for this new movie I'm making, right? And, and, and basically, I'm, I'm getting the money. They're giving me the money, and, uh, and they said, oh, you know who I'd like to see as, and they start naming one of the characters. I go, no, 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 no. I go, let me tell you something right now. No. No, here's here's my message to you. Let me let me just lay it out to you. Fuck your notes. Fuck your notes. I don't give a fuck who you want in the movie. <laughs> it's just not gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I figure look, I guess if I'm like to be a director, I gotta learn how to be a prick too, right? So <laughs> and they're like, okay. Yeah. What did they say? Okay. They said, okay. The guy said, hey, yeah. what? He said, what he said to me, he said, I like that. He goes, normally people come in here and kiss my ass. I much, I yeah, much right. really prefer, right. I much really prefer you just coming straight out and yeah. telling me to yeah. fuck off. Yeah, go and fuck said, yourself. We'll, we'll, still give you the, we'll still give you the money. So, Congratulations. You got money. Yeah. For a movie. Hey, hey Paul, does... um. Jack and I were talking about sort of the early Boston days, you know, when we, we played together at, uh, at Gallery East. I'm assuming your connection with Jack goes all the way back to, to, to those early Boston days when, you know, when, with you and Alec Peters and all that? Yeah, I, it was definitely in Boston because I think the first time I met Jack, and it was a blurry history, you know, but <laughs> I was at Al Peters' house when they drove into town. And 
Jack, it, it felt like you kicked the door in. <laughs> but the door slammed open. And, and this is when you were like in the, you know, you had the leather jacket, you had the spurs on, you had everything, right? Yeah. The kerchiefs, the spurs, and you walk in. And the first thing you said is like, where's the, where's the Coke? <laughs> <laughs> and Alec was there and uh, he happened to have some. It, it, it was kind of just like that. It was just like a fucking tornado. And that was the, you know, that's what I remember. He kicked the door in in 1980. Where's it? Didn't it's, it felt like he kicked the door? He just swung it open. I, I'm just loud. I, I'm just a yeah. loud person. <laughs> I try to be quiet. I try to be small, but it's very difficult. And that where's was 81. That, where's 82? that crap? Where's know. that crappy stepped on Coke? <laughs> yeah. circa, circa let me tell you something. The quality of Coke doesn't matter when you've ran out. <laughs> <laughs> you, may, you may be you may be high a little highfalutin early on in the evening but late night it's like that yellow tinge stepped on fuck whatever let's just get that it's just the ceremony the act it's the it's the it's the act of doing it that's that's what uh, we're in it for right oh that's yeah. great but that's it was great. yeah but it, anyway so yes yeah. So, but so, Paul, it was so helpful to us, and I really appreciate it. I am very thankful, Paul. I, I, because well, you do get to the point after it's like, you know, people don't realize like how many times you go down on one fucking knee. Like, right. like you know, you just got to say, I'm not going all the way down. Man, I remember yeah. I was getting, I, I got a, I got in this fight one time, and I remember it was me and a buddy at this house. And I remember I was in the middle of a busy street, like the fight had gone out into the busy street. And I remember being on my hands and knees, getting kicked, just seeing black flashes coming. And I just kept saying, don't go down. Don't fucking go down. Don't go down, you know? And it's the same thing you're making a movie, man. It's like, yeah. it's like you get blow after blow after yeah. blow after blow. And it's like, just yeah. don't go fucking down. Just don't go down. Yeah. Keep and that's how you sounded the day you called me. It was yeah. like, <laughs> end of rope. But, but, you know, I saw the movie. I loved it. And I, you know, I love Jack. I love everything he, you know, the way he, you know, his art, his work is, is him. So I was like, oh, I want to see this. And then I was like, well, I know friends of mine want to see this. And other people will want to see this. Yeah, people can see this. You know, let's yeah. finish this movie. Yeah. And it is long. It is long. And it is, you know, and I I get it. You know, it's like, and now now I look back. And, and we had even talked about it. We said, well, what are we going to cut out? We're going to cut out five minutes. You know yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. Like you can't, we couldn't cut out 20 minutes. We couldn't. So it's like, fuck it. What are we going to do? You know, it, fuck it, it. wasn't, it, it's not the type of movie where, yeah, let's cut these 30 minutes out and it's going to be fucking great. That's right. It's going to change right. the whole thing. That's right. That's not That's the right. type of movie it is, you know? Yeah. Let's so, cut the producer's girlfriend out of this scene. <laughs> yeah. That's right. You might, it, 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 in other words, you have to digest. You know, you, yeah, you got to yeah. digest the whole fucking thing. Or, 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 it's or, still going to be what it is, you know? Yeah, so. hit pause, <laughs> hit pause, go to the bathroom, get yourself a sandwich and come back in and watch the rest. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. I mean, watch, yeah, watch, yeah. It, watch it in a couple of increments is what I do. You know, it's, it's what we kind of do these days uh, anyway with anything, whether it's, you know, uh, the Irishman or, or, you know, a lot of things are four hours long. You right. watch them in 45 minute increments. You know, that's just the yeah. way viewing is now, man. You know? Well, and that's why I didn't want to go and I talked to Paul about like going into film fest. Look, I get it. I don't want to fucking do that. I don't want to go into film festival. I don't want to fucking, you know, I don't want to give a talk about a film after they've just been listening to me talk for two fucking hours. It's like, <laughs> you know, no, just hey, thank you. Enjoy the film. Yeah. Write me later. I'm online. Yeah. Bye bye. I, I love what you said about, you know, the process here, you know, you go down on one knee and, 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 and Paul, you know, you certainly have this perspective. I, I do. I, I do as well. I think what happens after you've done one or two of them is that you sort of get that concept and realize, like, I'm going to take a couple shots to the head, but, you know, I believe in this thing. I have a vision and I will persevere. Well, and that's the same thing. And, and even looking at this film, you know, it, it, to me, it was like the beginning of punk rock. 
to me. So when I got in a band, I don't know what the fuck's going on. We don't know how to play. We don't know what's happening. We never fucking made a record. We don't know how to write a song. Hey, let's just do it. And it was the same thing with this film. It's like, hey, I got no fucking idea what's going on. Luckily, our editor, Paul Covington, who was a longtime mm. TSOL fan, he was there with me just to say, hey, you know, I could ask him questions. But he also pulled a Tom Wilson for me. Paul sat back and said, yeah, do it. What do you want to do, man? You're the director. What do you want? And, and he was really cool about that. But it, but it was like punk rock because I didn't know how to make a film. I didn't know what was going on. I sure as fuck didn't want to hear you telling me how the fuck I'm supposed to make a film. So let yeah. me just do this, fail, fuck up, succeed. I don't give a fuck. I don't care if people buy it. I don't care if people like it. It's just, hey, I'm just going to make it. I'm yeah. just going to make this fucking thing and you can all eat shit. <laughs> you yep. know Paul Covington was great because he he had to learn. I mean, everybody learns something on every movie, but you know he had to learn how to deliver the movie because he hadn't done that. And, yeah. and you know, he said like, "Okay, so how do we get it to them?" And I was like, "Well, you got to get it to them," <laughs> you know. Right. And uh, and he hadn't done that, and we kind of walked through it and got it done, you know. But that was it. That was more DIY than like, yeah. you know, you're not just handing it over to a company and they're going to do everything. And it, you and know, I, so. I like the fact it's like, God damn it. Shit's too fucking safe these days in everything. You know, it's like too, people are too worried about offending somebody and they got to do it right. And this is what people expect. And they're going to see that. It's like, fuck them. Fuck, fuck, fuck you all. <laughs> fuck, I, you got a big, I got a big bag of fuck you sitting right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, <laughs> you know, it, it, you know, this is the course that a lot of kind of more, subculture, underground, rock movies, you know, they're all taking this more yeah. kind of marginal, you know, uh, uh, kind of side circuit. And there's it, they're getting seen a lot. I mean, everybody talks about, you know, all, all those movies, but they're not, you know, whatever. The movie business is about learning how to tolerate punch after punch after punch yeah. after punch and just push it aside, push it aside, push it aside, yeah. you know, fuck you, fuck you. And then somebody says yes, and then you say yes, and you just make that go as far as it can. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's I, I, really I, I the journey. Yeah. Uh, that's something <laughs> that I've been lacking. Again. Maturity yeah. is something again. I don't, that's not my strong suit. Maturity is not <laughs> something I come out in spades. What, yeah, what was the big? Good. What was the big? Like in, persp in, in 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 looking back a little bit, Jack. What what what's like standing here right now? What's the big takeaway from the film moving forward towards your next film? Is, is there you know, it, did you glean glean any perspective moving forward? No, no, <laughs> no. I mean, yeah, you're no. learning. You're constantly learning. You're con I mean, the one thing I learned is everybody is important. That's the other thing. Yeah, you really, you really realize, like, you know, look, it's not just you. You know, it, it's it's Rackman, it's Covington, it's it's the it's the coffee guy, it's the guy parking, right. it's this person. Like you really realize you can't do it without all these people. Like, right. like and you really need to respect the people that you work with all the way across the board. Like everybody needs to be respected. Uh when I was in Indonesia, the one thing that I, I really enjoyed with the Hindus is every person's job was respected, mm. uh, at least the guys I was with. Maybe I was just with some really spiritual cats, but but everybody's job was respected. No one was any higher than anyone. The, the director is just as high as the guy setting up the chairs. Like everybody is just, you know, we're all doing this together. And I, I think I took that away from it. Also, uh, be okay with chaos, be okay with stuff not going your way. And then, and then the other one too, is the, the same thing from punk rock. Fuck you, fuck mm -hmm. you, man. You know, you, it's like, I'm going to do whatever I want. That's, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing what I want. And, yeah. and that's yeah. how, if I have to just make movies on my fucking phone, I'll make movies on my phone. I, I don't really care. I'm 62. I don't have a job. My teeth are all falling out. I can't, walk basically you know <laughs> I, i'm not much longer on this planet anyway so fuck it yeah yeah so, you know uh, I, go the ahead, new Paul. film is a narrative right jack <laughs> you wrote a script right you were going to send me the script i haven't gotten it but oh i did it's it's yeah it's a drama 
It's like a yeah. it's like a dark comedy drama. Yeah. Yeah. And it uh anyway, but it but just I I, I like I, I, I like what you said uh, about uh everybody everybody sort of being on an even keel. And and I grew up in that environment. My dad was a filmmaker and he was he was very unorthodox because what he would do at the beginning of his shoot is he would bring everyone together and say, you know, basically we're all together on this. Anybody's welcome to come up and take a look through the eyepiece. It's just like, hey, what's your name? What do you do? And my dad created, I grew up in an environment where my dad really, uh, uh, all his sets, the film sets were like that. And it drove, a lot of people didn't like working with him and didn't want to be a part of it because there wasn't like this stale hierarchy of, you know, I'm up here and that's a PA and this and that. My dad, my dad really did things a, a bit unorthodox, and he's a very, as a result, you know, he's a very beloved figure, you know, in, in the film business, and gave a lot of people, gave a lot of people a, a lot of opportunities, you know. So I, I came up with that sort of mentality as well, you know. It's not, yeah, you know, and and I've been on film sets, and I'm sure you have too, Paul. I, I've been on film sets, uh, not lately, you know, where you have people, you know. Uh, directors, you know, quiet on the set, and you know, what the fuck is, you know, like really ugly film sets. And they were always so bizarre and foreign to me, you know, <clears throat> really disgusting. So, you know, you, you, you live and you, you, you live and you learn. Uh, anything well, else, Paul? Uh, go ahead, Jack. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I was going to say, I mean, this is the one thing I like about punk rock so much. <laughs> Look, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Paul, no, yeah, I, I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm a kid coming in here just trying to do something but but i really like the fact in punk rock anybody could play anybody could do it there wasn't this this rock star fucking hierarchy bullshit i okay one time we were playing a show and i got a call from this booking agent right and they said to me the booking agent said to me hey can you make sure that so and i'm not even going to name their names i will be a gentleman they they said, can you make sure that so-and-so and so-and-so can get in the back? It was a big show. They wanted to let him in the back because they didn't want to walk through the crowd. And I thought, fuck no, fuck them, fuck no. Go call somebody else. Are you kidding me? So this, this band that puts themselves as a band of the people, the right. fucking, you know, <laughs> shoulder to shoulder rockers. It's like, bitch, and they won't walk through the fucking crowd? You know, it's like each yet. You know, <laughs> I don't name any names, but it's like that's the attitude I I want to try to keep by making this stuff, man. Sure. Yeah. By doing this, that same attitude. Sure, absolutely, Paul. Uh, I know you're busy. Uh, any parting word? Any parting words? No. Um. Thanks for having me on. It's always great to hang out with Jack. Yeah. Jack, I'll see you in California, I guess. Okay, but wait, uh, you want to talk about the script to be unpublished? Your script got published. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, what's I, up? Let me get that. Yeah. See, so, I got it. I'm his hand. So, see, Jack's ahead of me now because now he found all the money. So, this is a, uh, a screenplay that was going to shoot right around COVID and then hopefully after COVID. And then the second half of the financing just all fell apart. So, soon, about a year later, um, or a little less than a year, this company, the Screenwriters Draft, this really small publisher that publishes screenplays. And a lot of screenplays that, you know, have this kind of um, a legendary status in Hollywood or films that almost got made or films that were cast and ready. So this is coming out. We're doing a reading Friday at McNally Books down at South Beach Seaport. I got two young actors reading these roles. This is about kids in a weekend. This is a, a um, it's a story. This is a story, Claudine 19. This is a story about a, a 15 year old, really shy, broken kid from a, you know, single mom, domineering mother family. And he gets left for a weekend in New York um, because his mom couldn't pick him up. He gets left in New York with this family who's not there, but this young girl who works for the family is there and she's a shoplifter. She just like a fucking huge operation. And she's like, fuck you. I don't want to take care of this 15 year old kid. And she pulls him into her scheme and he starts stealing with her and going out at night. And it's like a fucking 48 hours that changes his life. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah. it's New York, 1980. 
it's so, it's it, 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 it gave me a little after hours tinge you know that so yeah, a little after hours yeah it's just like early 80s in new york city so I, cool. I said too much, but that's coming out. You can buy it like Amazon, whatever. And um, Claudine, Claudine, uh, nine, Claudine, Claudine 19. 19. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Got it. That's anyway. funny. That's funny you yeah. say that, Paul, because I used to have this kid, Marty, that I would take on commercial burglaries with me. He was <laughs> there you small. go. He was like a he was like a little kid, right? And he yeah. was small. He was way under eighteen. I mean, fuck, I could have got yeah. a lot of trouble for it. But I put him down through holes and stuff yeah. and dropped. You Marty fucking in. changed that kid's life, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he, later on, he wrote me. He's like in Texas or whatever, and he said, yeah. "I just want to let you know that that was some of the funnest times of my life." Exactly. Yeah, that's kind of where he, this comes from. From growing up in New York and stuff. Yeah, so he, I'm still he gonna make it. Still going to try to make it, but this he could have been. He could have been. A, he could have been a jockey or or one of those guys that, that <laughs> yeah, in Nam exactly. in Nam that went down yeah, in, in, in a tunnel, tunnel rat, in, 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 a tunnel rat. But instead, he was he was one of Jack Grisham's guys. <laughs> you know, making movies like Jack makes movies, like you make movies, Jew, like I make movies. You have to be ready to make any movie the way it needs to be. I'm making a movie right, right now for no money. We right. started it with money. We ran out. Yeah. So yeah. now there's no money, but we're still making it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So it's like, you know, it, and I'm producing that, and and um, you know, that's that's what happens, you know. And then other movies like, oh, we got most of the money. What about the Joey, Sh the Joey shit have? That's movie. the one. Yeah. That's the one that yeah. we're finishing. You know, hey, and we're gonna finish it. What? That's uh, Scott, he's that's, legitimate. Scott, that's Scott's film. Yeah. He's legitimate. He's, he's, he's legitimate. an elected. Really, he's elected Green Party politician in Vancouver. Yeah, Joey's and, um, a good dude. He made and me he still I tours. He I still told tours. you all this story before. The first time I met Joey, because of course I'm listening. Disco sucks. Disco sucks. Dog shit. You yeah. know what? You know, listen yeah. all that. The first time I met him was at this show, and Todd Barnes and I had these. We had scorpions. It was like uh, the Wild Bunch. We had scorpions in this pit. And Tom and Todd and I had sticks and we were like making them fight each other. You know, this so Joey walks up right and he looks at us and he's not that much. How old is he? He's not that much older than me. He's like, no, 65, maybe. Maybe Let me look him yeah, up. Go he's ahead. Like, yeah, he, he's like 64, 65. Yeah, he's not like that. that much older, man. But we're in there, I'm in there, you know, making these scorpions fight each other. And Joey walks up and goes, What are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> Like I Joey, felt bad. Joey's, Joey's sixty-seven. Okay, so there he's got five years on me, and yeah, I guess yeah. when you're twenty, five years is a lot of years. You know what I mean? That's yeah, a that's yeah, a big. Yeah. But I remember just thinking, God damn, like this guy's this is a different kind of guy. You know what I mean? And he, yeah. and he's always been like that. And you know the fact that he's you know that he's done what he's done. He's put his fucking actions where his mouth is. Yeah. I, I just think he's he's great, wonderful. Yeah. Love Joey. Yeah, absolutely. Love him. Hey Paul, that, that, that movie will finish in the spring, you know. So right we'll see. Anyway, I I'll talk go. to you soon, Paul. Thank you for stopping by. Bye, guys. Hey, Bye have care. a great time. See you soon. Thank you. Right. Bye -bye. Good to see you, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> I love Paul. He was really man. I didn't know who else to reach out to, and I thought, fuck, man, I was in his movies. So he's gonna help yeah, me yeah. Yeah. do this. No, it's a good. It was a good call, man. You know, he he's a he's a great organizer, and you know, I I've gone to him. You know, I went to him when I was doing the Alago film and had to sit down with him and said, you know, showed it to him and said, you know, what do you think, man? Like, like, right, can you, right. give, you know, like, just what do you, you know, and, and he, you know, he gave me some, you know, some really good perspective on it, you know, on the whole thing. And you mentioned something, you mentioned something before, and, and, and I, I don't think it just pertains to film. I think it, it, it could pertain to band stuff also is, and, and I've done, I've done a couple of these things and you kind of set out with an idea and you know we're gonna we're gonna go for this 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 and this but along the way things happen and this 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 and this kind of turns into that 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 and that and when i make films i i don't i don't like to go in um super regimented you know but but it's a fine line between going in you know you know regimented and going in you know uh you know, unprepared and and careless and inviting a disaster, but I always like to keep room for the magic to happen. Right, you know? and, yeah. and then you know one thing I've learned, like from 
like doing side projects and music, doing side projects or whatever. So I learned something. I know Andy Dick is out of favor with a lot of people these days, but uh, one of the first films I did, uh, I hooked up with Susan Diner and I had wrote this movie and Susan directed it. And I had this script and I really had ran through the script and I, I, you know, I wrote this script and I wanted it to be something. And, and then, so when Andy Dick came on, he was playing a teacher in the movie. He right. was using lines out of the script, but then he was also uh, like, you know, what do they call it? You know, the fucking improvising, book, improvising, but he was also improvising and he was so great. And I thought, oh my God, this is why you, you want Andy Dick to be Andy Dick. You know, yeah, some stuff is important. You need to make sure that they hit that. But then you also want them to be him because that's why you got them. Absolutely. It's like when I made a record and had Rick Agnew, I made a Joy Killer record and Rick Agnew and Steve Hofstetter, they both played guitar on it. It's like you get these guys because they're fucking great. That's, that's right. why you get them, man. You don't get these great people and then confine them. You get these people and you let them be them. And it just makes, oh my God, that's what you want, man. Absolutely. And you have directors, you know, you, 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 you have some directors who sort of just sort of, you know, loosely create, create the, the scene and just let them go. And then you have other guys like Hitchcock or whatever, you know, other directors that are really, you know, uh, Kubrick, right? Stanley right. Kubrick, guys like that were so incredibly regimented. But, you know, I lean more towards, you know, you get your guys – and like, and on my end, it's guys like Peter Green, or, or like I'm I'm doing a dramatic a dramatic heist film now that that's that's in development. We just shot the trailer, but you know what I'm looking at is for the most part is you know you bring these guys in like you said because you know you, you want to let the guys do what they do, and, right? And and, and 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 I'm not I'm not a real regimented regimented kind of guy. You know you you get this is what's happening in this scene. You know <laughs> you got it and go. You know. Yeah. And I, I get it when there's certain parts in the story that you need. The, the one thing I, that was a bummer. So doing this documentary, this TSOL thing. So once the guys had their, did all their parts, my friend Melissa transcribed everyone's yeah. part. So yeah. I didn't even look at footage. I just looked at the lines that they said and I edited it. I edited that, edited it like a, like I would a book. Is that you know, right? I pulled these lines out, moved these lines around, and then I gave those lines to Paul and the, our editor and said, hey, Paul, I want I want this line, this line, this line, even if they were moved around because it made the story tight, like right. it was tight on the story. And uh, so, you know, making a film, you you want maybe you need somebody to hit certain parts the, the these lines need to be said. But yeah. around that. OK fucking go to town as long as you're in character as long yeah. as you're in character and you've hit the important words the important thing then you know have some fun with it did how involved you how involved were you with with sort of the 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 the, the, the edit of this thing and that that's that's a wide berth there because as an editor myself you know it's like you have to make first off you have to go through all the fucking footage and then you, you have to make a fucking select reel then, then you go through it again, and you kind of put together the greatest hits. Then you gotta go. You know, it's it's a big process. How involved were you? Well, not. I mean, Paul, our our editor was such a great editor. My involvement was basically taking those lines out, like I what I said. I would okay. send Paul something. I'd say, hey, I want from you know zero zero one to zero yeah. zero two point three. I you see. know what I mean? It's like I would tell him, hey, this is the line. This is the line. This is the line. Right. that I wanted. And, and then he would do it and then send it to me. And I'd look at it and say, great, you know, great. That looks great. Hey, can we lose this? Or Paul would say, Hey, can we hang on this moment yeah. for a minute? You know? And, and so it was a really cool back and forth thing. And, uh, and for me, it was always learning, learning, learning. I, I heard this guy say one time, he said, the ripe fruit rots on the vine. Mm. Meaning, you know, always stay green, always stay, you know, learn, 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 you know. So, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a great experience, you know. Um, let me take a quick sponsor break this time, a quick one, and let's come back and let's take some questions from around the world, okay? Sounds great. There you go. There you have it, Jack Grisham, uh, new film, Ignore Heroes, The True Sounds of Liberty. We just had our old friend Paul Rackman on as well. 
This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Just a couple quick things I want to mention. Uh, of course, the Women of the Pit event at Sea Squat, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Holiday Slambery on the 17th. Uh, this hasn't been announced yet, but this is going to be announced. I'm a presenter at the Extreme Music Awards show up in Albany. There is a pre-party the Friday night, January 12th, which Incendiary Device will be playing with a whole bunch of bands. Um, at, at the Empire Underground, because the next night, of course, is the Extreme uh, uh, Music Awards with uh, a lot of presenters, members of Slayer, Exodus, Biohazard, Hatebreed, Soulfly, Rancid. Um, I'll be presenting uh, uh, an award. So that's happening up in Albany on um, the 13th of January. Uh, Sunday, January 21st, down at the Bowery Electric Free All Ages Matinee, Tension. Long Island Hardcore represent Winter Wolf, Redwoods, Mickey's Crew, and The Give Ups. Uh, the Incendiary Device record is out. It is available uh, at pre-order. It, it's, at, it's at Bridge Nine Records. Um, it's also streaming now. And there's, there's merchandise as well. Uh, believe it or not, for the first time ever, Incendiary Device has merchandise. Merchandise is a pain in the ass. But uh, now that we have someone to handle it, uh, that's good. So the, the, so the record is available. There's a couple variants. There's some t-shirts and it's available on all streaming platforms. So listen to this, you fucking bums. Um, questions for, uh, oh, you know what? Quickly. Uh, this is the New York Hardcore Chronicles live and we are sponsored by blah, 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 blah. And 126 Hardcore Clothing. They're a streetwear brand for restless individuals who don't compromise they're about being positive, spontaneous, and true to yourself. For years, they experimented with several printing methods and materials and collaborated with a large number of designers and illustrators, always giving room for fresh perspectives while retaining the hardcore attitude. Get in touch with them. Ramp up your game at www.126clothing.com. Last but not least, Upstate Records, a New York-based DIY independent metal and hardcore label founded in 2017. They broke into the scene with their inaugural 26-band compilation and since then have churned out close to 100 releases in their brief five-year history. With such notable artists as Leeway, NYC, Sub-Zero, Brick by Brick, Fear of Five as part of their roster, they maintain a focus on elevating upcoming artists that have the work ethic to take their music to the next level. Upstate Records also has an extensive collection of distro items from labels from around the world and recently penned an exclusive distribution partnership with Century Media. Check them out at www.upstaterecordsnewyork.com. Any questions for our guest, Jack Grisham, uh, please post. Don't be shy. Let it fly. Uh, let's bring Jack back on. Hey, man. Hey, man. Congratulations on the record. Yeah, you know how that shit, you know how that shit goes. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just went in and just, I, I just went and did a, a song uh, with, with some guy like some young guys, just like kids almost just give a little fresh blood just just how's that fun. so far so good i'm gonna do the vocals on monday up at kitten robot uh studios up with paul ross with 45 grave yeah, Quisher Roots, yeah, and Hog, and, 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 yeah, everybody he was, he was brother yeah that's right talk, about, talk about twisted roots right He's a yeah yeah twisted and uh roots. i love paul we've been friends for a long time and uh just yeah. fun to go up there and just it, it's cool to do something without having to you know, you're just fucking doing it for the fuck of it, just for the yeah, fun man. of doing it. It's good. Yeah. Um, let's let let let's see. Let's let's poke around. Let let's see. Uh, let's see who's got what here. Um, hey Jack, any new music coming out in 2024? Yes, Gustavo. Gustavo just did a bitch and shirt. For oh. So he took the yeah. I love it. Let's see. He did the uh, he took the 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 carry uh, God damn it, Sean Carey skank circle jerk skank oh, yeah, thing sure, and put sure. the reaper on it from the yeah, cover yeah. of ts wells dance with me record skank yeah. it. it was a great gustavo great shirt but uh yeah there's a new ts well record that's coming out it's a collection of uh singles basically um uh, we hadn't really got together and worked on a i like to work on a record i like to start okay. from nothing and make a cohesive record sure and, this this is just a collection of singles that we've done, a couple of new songs, and uh, that comes out on Kitten Robot Records. Also, and, all sort of gathered under one umbrella. 
Right. Well, we we all re we recorded them all up at the studio up there, so they all sound. Right. You know, they got the same feel. Uh, that was uh, one of the songs. Then there is our version of "Sweet Transvestite" with Keith Morris playing the part of Brad. There you go. <laughs> and, there you go. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and Josie Cotton came on and sang backups on one of the songs. That's cool. I love Josie and. Uh, you know, so that and then the 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 soundtrack for the Ignore Heroes movie just came out too on oh, wow. DCM Records. So it's the Is that right? Yeah, it's the original score uh that Greg Keane did and um and that it, just came out too. So it's it's fantastic, man. It it's it, 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 and you know, you know, and, and I want I wanted to to mention uh because I have this in my notes and doing my homework, this is something that I just I came back to again and again. Uh, was was this record and I love I love his uh, the score that he did sort of you know has these sort of laments you know doing you know a, a lot of the the keyboard you know flourishes uh, from this record turns up in the score and you know uh, my my notes uh, you know uh, on the records because uh, you, you you said like uh, beneath the shadows and, and I quote you know we took a shot and my notes are like, it's my favorite album, <laughs> you know? I fucking love it, you know? Well, we took, I mean, we took a, uh, you know, I liked it. I liked it because yeah. the, the bottom line is if if you saw us, then you saw that we played everything. You know, yeah. the, if you look at the set list back there, it wasn't just the first EP, it's this, it's a mix, you know, it was yeah, a yeah. show. And, uh, but, but when you're somewhere far away, and you just hear that you think, oh, these guys have now gone off the deep end. These these fucking, you know, and maybe we had gone off the deep end a little bit, but uh, yeah, yeah. But, well, but hindsight was, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? At the time when it came out, it was like, ah, yeah. You know? And it, it, you know, it's it, and once again, it's real. It's real fucking innocent, man. We were just yeah. kids, like learning, trying stuff, and that yeah, was yeah. the thing. You know, this some of the the ethos or whatever of punk rock was, you know, do whatever you want. Yeah. You know, it's so funny that some of these principles they're laid out, but then people don't really stick to them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. hey, make your own sound, do whatever you want, dress however you want. You know, it's like, yeah, great. That's great. That's a great principle, but do you live up to it? You know, and what happens when you really do start trying different shit or doing whatever? Are people still sitting back with an open mind? You know, and no, no, a lot of times not. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Uh, you know, another just just looking at my notes. You know, uh, weathered statues is is uh, the sleeper to me. You know, it, it really it's correct me if I'm wrong, but it really kind of closed out an era and, 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 and uh, it was, a, it, it was heading, it was sort of a bridge, it, but it was really closed out the era really, uh, you know, before beneath the shadows, it was sort of a, 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 a real sleeper. Uh, right. Uh, weather statues. Well, yeah. And it's the same, you know, I, I think for me, it's always, well, let's just see where we can take this. Even if you look later right. on at the, the band I was in the joy killer, if you look at the, the, those four, there's four records. They do the same thing that was going on in TSOL. Started like this, trade this, do this, and then and then you get to the point where okay, I've tried as much as I can. Yeah, let's yeah. shit can that band and do something else. Sure, you know, and it, and I've always looked like that. Let, let's yeah. look. I've already said that. I don't know yeah. how many times I can say fuck Reagan. You know, I, I I've said sure. it. Now let's sure. try this and try this and try that and. You know, it, it's not. It, it, let's let's just say they're not great career moves. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like it. but 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 I find that if you could make it to the finish line in the end, you could look back and collectively, there's a currency to this. You know, well, it, it, right. it, this is what I have found in in, in because for me in, in 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 kind of my career, there was all these sort of isolated incidents, all these isolated islands that as I was living them, you know, felt like misses or almost or yeah, that, but there came a certain point when I reached a certain age that looking back collectively, there, there, there was a respectable currency there. And that's when I, 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 I think an interesting concept, you know? No. And, and I, I agree with you. I agree with that. Iris Berry, 
uh, she's the the public uh, punk hostage press. She mm. would always tell me body of work, body of work, body of work. Don't worry about it. Just right. just write it, do whatever, put it out. Body of work, Jack. That's what she'd always say to me. You know, it's not. This isn't the be all end all. This song, yeah. this book, this movie. It's body of yeah. work. Just keep keep That's turning. Right. Yeah, that 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 has served me very well. This is a a comment from our our friend Brandon Brown from Fang. Um, our buddy says Jack once told me, "quote If you're worried about money, sell your guitar and take a job." Best advice I ever got. Told my boss the next day I'm going to keep touring and quit. <laughs> <laughs> gee, so gee, you're, gee, you're, 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 and it's hard to influence the fang guys, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Thanks, Brandon. Yeah, I mean, fuck. What are you gonna do? <laughs> what are you gonna do, man? Uh, yeah, and that's the. Yeah. You know, I. It, it's funny. Whatever. I. I you. Do, I've done so many fucking jobs just trying to keep playing music. You know, you're a yeah, painter. Yeah. You're selling cars. You're you're fucking digging ditches. You're yeah. just doing doing whatever just to keep going, just to keep yeah. working. A absolutely. Um, I went to, okay, just real quick, Joe, I'll tell you a story because somebody just brought this up. Please. So one day I'm working at this job up at USC at the college, the USC, and my job is I'm in the forklift moving pallets around right uh -huh. okay which uh -huh. is cool it's like it's, it's a job i'm moving these pallets around and as i'm moving the pallets around kids are lining up for the rock show that night the punk rock show that's being held on one of the halls at usc so sure. i'm out there driving the forklift moving pallets while kids are lining up to go see me play later <laughs> It's like, hey, look, I'm going to be in a minute. I'll be in there in a minute, but I got to, I got to move this to section eight. You know, so. Let me get this monkey suit off and wash yes. my hands. And, yes. Yeah, because I remember this kid saw me. And he sees me on the forklift. He's like, "What the fuck?" He thought I had stolen the forklift and was dicking around. It's like, no, That's dude, funny. I'm on the clock, man. That's fucking funny. Uh, yeah. Joel got uh, Joel um, Gostin. Yeah, uh, Gostin hey Joel is in Boston. Austin. Uh, hey, Jack, thanks again for doing the video interview with me about Tender Fury. All the best, Joel. Yeah, that that record just came out. Uh, if anger were soul, I'd be James Brown. Uh, was a was a I, I learned a great lesson. So there was this this this, you know, higher brow uh, magazine had done a review of that that record. And they said, you know, Jack writes like Graham Greene, blah, blah, blah. You know, just all this shit, you know, just <laughs> this, this great, re a great review. Something that somebody would pin to their desk, right? Right, right? For this record, if anger was sold, I'd be James Brown. And then some kid on a 10 cent fanzine done at Thrifty's Ice Cream on the Xerox machine. His oh, review yeah. of the record was, if shit were money, Jack would be rich. <laughs> <laughs> and and the fuck thing is, who do you think I believed? It was like yeah. Dude, that kid's yeah. right about me. <laughs> Just yeah, so fucked me. Um, what else we got here? Anybody? Hey, uh, if you got anything, post it now. Is the time? Um, yeah, let me answer this one. Uh, would you ever tour with Joe Wood like when Sammy Hagar toured with uh, David Lee Roth? No. Well, uh, next next question. <laughs> okay, but I did, no, I did. I told. I think I told you that story too. You did. I, you told you you told me the story, and I didn't think it's appropriate. But if you if you think it is, go ahead. Well, well, it's no. I I mean, I asked. I you know I I I sent him an email saying, hey, do you want to come out and play a couple songs with us? Yeah. You know, I thought it would be cool. It's been forty years. The band. Why don't you come out and play a couple of songs? Sure. I'll you know it. So it wasn't really me having a fucking problem with it, you know, yeah. but that never got, it, it never got returned. We, we don't need to go further than that, but yeah. But, and also, you know, yeah. So, so it's not like, it's like, I don't have any hard feelings towards yeah. him whatsoever. Yeah. And, and you know what, in, in, in his own, in, in their own way. And it's a weird thing that I can relate to too, uh, with the whole antidote thing, they did some good work. Uh, it, you know, with what they were doing, but it was sort of a little bit strange. Was it TSOL? It, you know, but they did some good work 
at, at, at a certain time there, uh, it, 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 you know, it, it's, it's, it's a weird, it's sort of an awkward thing. Well, I, I think it would have been interesting. Of course, we'll never know, you know, yeah. what would have happened if they had just made up a different name and yeah. came out as a new band, what yeah. would have happened? That's would right. it, you know, and, and, and we'll never know that, you know, yeah. but I, I wish they would have, because it would have saved me a lot of headache and I'm sure it causes them a lot of headache. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's yeah. just a bummer and it gives people, you know, just fodder. It, it's just, yeah. you know, shit to throw out and talk about. Absolutely. As we head down the home street, any, any idea when TSOL is coming back to New York? Yeah, it would be um, awesome to see. Yeah, well, sure. well, I, you know, here's the thing. Uh, you know, I don't. I'm not saying this as a threat, uh, Ron. So, Mike, our bassist, Mike has been out for a year. You know, Is we love. Right? Yeah, Mike physically has been. He's been out. Uh, or Brandon has been covering bass for Mike for the last year, and uh, and now Ron has got to get an operation on his shoulder in Ooh. January. So we're playing these two shows, our usual two LA and Orange County shows in January, and then we're taking a long break. Uh, we're taking a long break because Ron is going to get his shoulder redone or whatever, Ooh. and they say six months to a year at least he'll be out. So. Wow. You know, fuck, I'm 62. Am I going to keep doing this at 63? Yeah. And and the issue is, you know, somebody said before, they go, well, look at the Rolling Stones. Look at these guys. Look, we're in a fucking van. We're in a van and I drive. We're not in a, we're not in a tour bus. Yeah. We're yeah. not on a plane. Taking, we're, taking, a we're, we're not taking van. three days in between shows. That's we're right. We're, yeah. we're playing every night because we have to. You know, we did 28 shows in 27 days before. It's like we're we're a working class fucking band. You know, it's it's like if we don't if we don't play a, a show that day, it kills us. It yeah. kills us. And we're not making a ton of money. You know, yeah. it's not like it's minimum wage. We're making minimum wage when we go on tour. So yeah. so it's really it's not an easy high mileage, man. High mileage. Yeah. And my buddy my buddy uh, Mike from the stitches said, it's not just high mileage. He goes, it's motocross miles on you. Yeah, yeah. These are yeah. bumpy miles, man. Yeah, you know, people were asking us like, what well, a records out. It's great. You know, you guys going to tour and like, I can't, I can't, we can't tour. I can't tour. I mean, I, 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 I can't, I can't physically go night after night after night. It, it, it does. So if you want to see incendiary device, come to a cosmopolitan city like New York and you can see us. Play. <laughs> there you, yeah. But, Basically, um, Pat Baldwin asks, uh, "How does Jack regard the Cathedral of Tears material today?" Well, you know, that was a, a strange time for me. I wanted to distance myself from the punk rock thing because I, I was just, I was fucking done. It's like you, you, you had mentioned earlier when it got to the point where it was just the violence at the shows, the punk on punk violence. It's like, yeah. fuck, I'm so fucking done with that. Yeah, and uh, but. You know, there there were some issues when I did that record. A lot of people talk about the first demo for Cathedral of Tears, how much they liked it. Jack Rabbit was a big fan of the first demo. Sure. I can see that. that. I can but see that. But then we had we had problems making the record. I, I don't want to get into it because it was just like yep. threatened lawsuit shit, all sorts of fucking nightmare. And then my dad yep. died in the middle of that record. So uh, yep. mostly, you know... I don't know how I feel about. It. I'm not a. I'm not against it, but it's not my favorite thing no. to listen to. Really, sure, that makes sense. Uh, all right, so let me say to everybody out there, um, the doc is ignore heroes. The true sounds of liberty. I I piped it in. I think I, I piped it in. I think for a couple bucks on Amazon. Maybe is that right? Is it available like, on all Amazon? Platforms? Amazon to be on demand. Yeah, you can basically get it anywhere. You can get the the hard copy from D, from uh, MVD uh, distributors. The hard copy if you want it, and then uh, you can stream it or go whatever. And uh, and if you do watch it and like it, Lee, I, I hate to say this, but leave a review because it does it does people will see it. It makes it a little more visible because right. you know it's. It, 
we're not, we don't have any budget for, fucking, you know, it's word of mouth, man, is what it is. Word of, and thank you, Drew, for having me on. This is, this is a huge thing for that movie to get it out and to be on this platform. So people may take a look at it. And I, I really appreciate it. Of course, man. Um, I, uh, are you happy with, with the, with sort of the bandwidth that the film is getting? Is it, is it do you feel like it's accessible enough that yeah. if somebody well, wants to see it, they could, you know? Yeah, I guess, you know, going back to, to Tom Wilson, Tom Wilson said sure. something to me one time and, and I, I don't mean this in any offense in any way. Uh, he, so Tom and I had finished this joy killer record mm -hmm. and, 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 and so we sat back and it was just he and I in the studio. We're just sitting there and, and you, playing music, you know what I'm talking about. When you listen back to the record, when you finished it and you got that moment where you listen to the whole thing, you know? And so Tom and I sat there and he, he said, let's, let's listen. And we got the incense burn and it's, you know, <laughs> he's smoking a little weed at the time, you know, and right. we're just sitting there and we listen to it and he says, okay. And he goes like this and he wipes his hands and he says, and now we give it unto the hands of the lamb. Mm. And that's what he said, meaning, you know, it's like, hey, it's out of our hands now. Let it go. Yeah. And, and you know, that was the thing with that movie. It's like now that it's out of my hands, I don't I, I it's it's gone. I don't yeah. care. It's done. It's gone. Bye bye. Do what you will with it. Yeah, I, absolutely. And I, and I, I, I understand and relate, you know, uh, at this point, I, you know, there was a time early on where I would sort of want to read the reviews or see what people are saying or get hung up on that. You know, everybody's got a fucking opinion. Everybody, you know, and some people are, some people are, are paid to just basically talk shit and, and just come up with dumb shit. And what's important is, is how we feel about the art that we make, man. That's, that's what's up. That, and it really is. It's just about just making it, just yeah. making it. That was, that was it. It's right. like, Hey, just, just make the record, just yeah. write the book. Just make the movie just because it's all to me. It's all about the creation. I don't give a fuck about yeah. any. I don't want anything other than that. Yeah. I just want the ability to keep creating. That's what I want. And, you know, somebody said one time they said that uh, they were going to give me something of worth. It was like something of value. And this was a conversation between these two guys. Right. And the one oh. guy said, uh, he said, I'm not going to give that to Jack because he's probably going to sell it and give the money to the homeless or, or stick it into another fucking project. Like, you know, I'm not going to give him this money. He's not going to take care of himself. He's going to make something else with it. And it's like, yeah, that's all I, I just want to keep making stuff, man. That's all I want to do. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, Jackie. I love you, man. And uh, I, hope, so much, I, hope, Drew. I hope to see you soon, man. Yeah. You too. Thanks again. Okay, bye bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Well, there you have it. Yes, it was it was well worth it was well worth the wait. Um, I knew it was going to be great. Uh, oh, you like this guy? You think Heggs? Yeah, for sure. Yes, yes. He's he's just an American treasure. Um, uh, honored to call him a friend and a peer. Um, just a great show. Uh, I love the film. I can't say enough. I can't say enough about the film. Uh, go watch it. It's 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 a really ballsy fucking film, uh, you know. A few hours well spent. Thank you, Mark Block. I I, I appreciate that. Um, it was this was a well a well attended show. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, we'll be back in a week. Uh, is it a week or is it Sunday? Hold on a second. No, we'll be back Sunday with the non-residents. Right, Sunday's non-residents, and then the Sunday after is Joe Nelson. And the Sunday after that's Johnny Santos. The Sunday after that's Incendiary Device. A couple days later, the Wednesday's Johnny Temple. And then a week after that is the 300th episode. So all that makes perfect sense. It's all make it. Thank you, Gustavo. You certainly had a vibrant voice uh, on today's show. Um, big fan of your artwork. So, so thank you. Uh, best work day ever. Listen, if we can brighten up your work day, if you can get paid to watch the New York Hardcore Chronicles live, Hey, thank you, Sean. Um, uh, Sean Refuse, of course. Uh, Chum Huffer, uh, we're excited to have you guys play the Holiday Slamboree coming up on Sunday, December 17th. Um, thank you, John. It is, it, it's an easy listen with Jack. Uh, he's just, 
he's just a gem, man. That guy's a gem. That guy's a gem, you know. Um, thank you, JJ, 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 J. You know, we do our homework around here. We're in the business of 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 doing great shows. Uh, that said, I just want to remind everybody that the incendiary device uh, record is available. Uh, please pick it up. Please support. You, you'll love. Listen, you love the, You love this kind of music. Listen to this fucking record. Uh, we're very proud of it. It's available at um, Bridge Nine Records. You can pre-order it. There's also a, a T-shirt that's available. Uh, the books are available at www.stonefilmsnyc.com. So it's all it's all going down. Um, yeah, hey, yeah. Let's let's. We got to get some Fang ID shit happening. Um, we want to come out west, and you guys are always welcome. Uh, you know, to co to come here and play with us. So let's talk soon. Um, if you guys are ready to come come east, let's do a couple shows together. We're looking to come out. We're looking to come out west. Now, now, is that right, Andy? You didn't know much about him before this. He's in a, he's a character, man. He, he's he's got a he's got a great story, and and you know he's a very articulate, uh, you know, and intelligent individual. Uh, that said, thanks a lot, everybody. Um, we'll see you uh, in a couple of days. Until then, do good things, and good things will come to you. <laughs>